Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another weekly Wednesday live stream. I'm Peter. And I'm Mike. And of course, we are keeping our distance because Mike is not actually sitting here. I'm so safely I can, I can do around this the corner and I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> just, just in time, dodge that. <laughs> exactly. No, what a dodge. What a dodge. Uh, all right. Yeah, you can return now. Okay, cool. <laughs> Save um, again. So, yeah, thanks for joining today, guys. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about some fresh new gaming gear. Uh, I've got it on the table here with me. Uh, just to quickly uh, show you guys, I've got a mouse, the GM08. I've got a, oh, yeah, here we go. GM08, 08. There you go. Pretty cool. Uh, it's an entry level gaming mouse, so we're going to go over the specs with you guys as well. Uh, I've got a uh, really cool keyboard, the GK50 Elite mechanical gaming keyboard. Um, I would say this is the star of today's show. Uh, My so new personal favorite. Yeah, I know. Yeah, My, Mike's been uh, like beta testing it, and and he's like a real stickler for for what he likes and doesn't like on the keyboard. He's like an elitist, so that's why I guess the you know, elite kind of fits. <laughs> uh, but he, he is he's kind of like a keyboard enthusiast. I'm uh, I guess very you could picky say. on my keyboard indeed. But I've been yeah. using this one for I think almost half a year already. Something like yeah, like, like I said, he's, he was beta, beta testing the crap out of it. Yeah, um, I have like the very early sample. Yeah, and and he doesn't want to go back. He's like he's the second person now that I've actually. I tricked into uh, adopting an MSI keyboard as their favorite. So Eric is still hooked on the uh, GK50 low profile, as you all know. Um, and, and Mike is now hooked on this one. Uh, anyway, going to be telling you all about this one as well. Uh, and complementary to that, we've got a wrist rest. So the WR01. Well, we had to give it a name that kind of makes sense. So to make WR it a little bit for more wrist rest. Today. If it, when, when you know it, when you know it's the wrist rest, then you kind of get the WR anyway. Um, so we're going to go over all of them for you guys uh, during this stream. Uh, also going to be diving into a little bit like the nitty gritty about especially uh, keyboards because there's a lot of uh, different switches that you can get and and so for some people they might know exactly what they want they'll they'll be uh, exactly uh, th they know exactly what each switch does and, and what the difference is uh, but for those of you that don't know we're going to be diving into that a little bit we're not going to do every little detail but you know the in in uh, big lines we're going to be telling you uh, about the differences and uh, kind of what you would choose uh, when you would choose which one um, but of course we also have a giveaway today. So if you go over to www.msi.com slash two slash insider uh, and you uh, perform a couple of actions, so you probably have to uh, like a couple of pages, maybe share a post or something like that. And the more actions you do, the more chances you have to win uh, a $20 Steam code. We're going to be giving away uh, a couple of them during the live stream. Um, so yeah, if you miss out on one or if you don't get one of them, uh, hang around because it's going to be during the stream that we're going to be giving them away. And for 20 US dollars, you can buy the game that we're going to play. Exactly. Today. And <laughs> I, I didn't play it before, but it, it's called Typing of the Dead. You know, we, we had to pick a game that was sort of relevant for the products. And in the past, when we had Gaming Gear launches, uh, Mike and Eric, I think, had a, a, some games. Uh, Type Racer, we're all, we can also play uh, later on, so you guys can actually, you know, try to... Um, well, basically beat Mike because he's, he's like the, we call him the angry <laughs> typist because just the pace uh, of his typing and also like the, like the and sound I, of his I typing, that keyboard. Like, it just sounds <laughs> like he's an angry typist. Like he's, he's, he, he sounds like Even he's always typing. Even if I'm writing typing. a love letter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah he, he sounds like he's the person always typing a strongly worded letter, you know, that, that kind of thing. Anyway, um, but yeah, the game is called Typing of the Dead uh, and it's, it's, uh, it, it's a game that's just so cheesy. I, I love it. Uh, it's just... <laughs> it's a little uh, bit over the top sometimes. It is. It is, yeah. And it's. I have to warn you guys as well, when we start playing the game, it's uh, uh, for adults. It's got a lot of adult, adult language in it. Um, so, yeah, be warned about that. Anyway. If you're a minor, just block your ears for a while. Exactly. Yeah, we'll tell you when to do, when to go like this. <laughs> or if you have a really good MSI headset, you know, you can you can just put that and put you know listen to your favorite tunes while you stay watching. <laughs> uh, anyway, but a little bit of inappropriate language in there. Uh, yeah, just a bit. Yeah, a tad. Just no, not not too much. Um, but yeah, uh, and well, uh, just so everybody knows as well, we are uh, streaming on multiple platforms. So uh, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter on multiple channels. 
uh, used to stream on Mixer too, so I'm kind of used to saying that, but that no longer no, exists. Mixer is no more. Yes. Okay. Rest press press F. Yeah. <laughs> Can we get some Fs for Mixer? Anyway, uh, so yeah, a lot of things going on in the chat. Uh, I see a lot of guys talking about Fall Guys and one of those games. Maybe we'll play that in the future as well. Uh, sounds really <laughs> fun as well. I see someone reacting in Twitch chat. Let's not fool ourselves. We're going to buy Fall Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough, you know, fair enough. So, yeah. Um, Maybe we should play that sometime on stream. Yeah, yeah, we, we should. We should. I, I think last week or something, somebody had a really nice suggestion of uh, maybe, you know, there should be like a lucky suit in Fall Guys. That sounds cool. Hmm. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a good game for it as well. It's like it's got that same kind of, you know, anime fun feel about it. So Yeah, it's like the, the really the party game vibe it has going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But also not too serious, you know. It's like it's fun. Yeah. And they have a lot of the skins as well. You, you can be a milkshake or a hot dog or yeah, all yeah. kinds of things. Exactly. <laughs> um You'll be cursing for sure playing Fall Guys. Pro knowing us, probably, yeah. yeah. We'll probably get Eric involved as well, so then you know it's going to be... If, if you've seen <laughs> us playing over, Overcooked uh, at, at the beginning of this year, you know how that's going to go. <laughs> we tend to play casual games every now and again, so yeah, that's uh, that would be fun. Um, anyway, yeah, so um, good luck with the, uh, with the giveaway as well. And uh, let's, let's dive right in, I'd say. Um, so maybe uh, let's start with the with the mouse. Unboxing time. Yes, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we actually have multiple uh, samples as well. So I've got one actually here connected. So I'll be playing uh, with one of these as well, trying to show you a bit how it, how it goes. So uh, no one clutch... heard that, right? Sorry, no one heard. No, that. no, nobody, nobody <laughs> heard that. Um, Clutch GM08, uh, like I said, it's, it's a, more of an entry-level mouse, but it's still got some really nice uh, features as well for uh, like, you know, the people who, who don't um, want necessarily need the best of uh, uh, Entry-level sounds components. so negative. It's more of a bang it, for buck mouse. I, I, I know, yeah, well, that's the thing, you know, it's like if you, if you don't want to, if you don't care too much about all the, the, the extra things and, 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 you know, like you don't really necessarily think that the, the most expensive mouse sensor is the best for you. And to be honest, for some people it's not. I've been playing with this one a little bit and um, I mean, yes, I'm used to having like mice with the, the highest end sensor and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I can do pretty decently with this one as well. So, um, yeah, you know. But also nowadays the more affordable sensors and then especially the optical ones are also yes. getting better and better. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it depends a bit on the games you, you play, of course, um, if you really need a top end sensor. Yeah, also, also. Um, so yeah, the thing about this is it has a uh, Pixar PAW3519 uh, optical sensor that probably doesn't say that much to you, uh, but it has a DPI of up to 4200, uh, which is pretty, still pretty decent, uh, and it allows for well fast and accurate tracking, obviously. Um, really good build quality as well. Uh, it uses the uh, gaming switch is rated for over in, in the main two mouse buttons, so underneath uh, uh, these two, uh, for, uh, rated for over, over 10 million clicks. Um, so that's always nice. Uh, it, it even has a uh, adjustable weight system, which I'm going to show you a little bit later. And of course, a, a dedicated DPI button uh, right there in the middle where you can just instantly switch DPI settings. But uh, let's first get it out of the box if I can. Uh, and I actually haven't opened this one up at all yet. So uh, there are some uh, stickers. Are you already teasing this mouse on the side? Sorry? Are you already teasing this specific type of mouse there? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, just show, I, sh I just showed everybody. I've got it actually here, ah, but I want to take it out of the I'm, box. I there's just, that. <laughs> there's like a transparent sticker here that's, uh, I don't have anything sharp here, right? I mean, do, do you still have any glass shards yeah, left? Yeah, I think from... uh, if you look on the floor, <laughs> it depends on how good Ja did the cleaning. Uh, I think pretty good, actually, because I don't <laughs> see anything. And I didn't also didn't feel anything when... Uh, if you're wondering what we're talking about, uh, <laughs> it was two weeks ago. Yeah. We um, did a live stream about our uh, new computer cases. Uh. And I smashed some tempered glass windows. Yeah, Mike, Mike j tested just exactly how much was needed to I actually damage. I risked my damage life to entertain you guys. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's your job, you know? Exactly. It's like the less glamorous version of Mythbusters. <laughs> 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 but it was pretty cool, because I actually also didn't know um, that tempered glass could take that much punishment and not break. I, I honestly expected it to break sooner uh, during your yeah, test. It took a lot of effort. 
It did, yeah. It did. Because we, we tried two tempered glass panels, so a regular mm -hmm. one and a laminated one. Um, but it, both are extremely strong and it, I've been smashing those <laughs> panels like crazy with a hammer. <laughs> you were, yeah. But in the end, I really had to put it on the ground and smack it at full force. You know what? These stickers suck. Like Oh, I see some complaints in chat. No <sighs> ASMR unboxing? No, well, I don't know. I mean, we're going to do some ASMR later on, but that's more with the, Mechanical the switches switch in ASMR. it. With, because we've got the clicky switches. So what I'm going to do is I've got actually both types here and even some, some separate switches lying here. Um, and I'm actually going to be trying to put them as close to my lav mic as possible so you guys can actually hear the difference because that's kind of at least we're going to try that i don't know how well that's going to go you guys can be the judge of that uh i mean okay wait maybe maybe i can do a little bit of asmr like this is like a pre-test for the for the switches okay so here we go how was that <laughs> like that 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 sound i, I hope the, the mechanical switches opening. will be better <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so too and i think so because you know that's part of why you, you you would take some of those switches i see a comment in chat hello sir i'm the second winner of last week's live stream I haven't received my steam code yet uh, with a nickname uh we will um check for you um uh, it should have been emailed by now i suppose um but yep. we will check and send you again yeah please also check your spam box to see if it didn't land there um, because it should have been sent already. Yeah, sometimes it, it does that, so... But we will make sure to, to double check and resend it. Yeah. Alright, I'll put this back in here. So, I've got the GM08 right here. By I the way, guys... I already see a question from Caesar. What switches do those keyboards come in? We'll uh, go in full detail later. Yes. Uh, wait a minute, then we'll, we'll tell you all about it. Uh, first, we want to cover the mouse a little bit. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but we have new packaging for our products. There you go. What do you guys think? Yeah. Uh, maybe show you guys a little bit. Here you go. It's a brand new style. Uh, I don't know if you remember the, the... I don't have the examples of the last generation packaging but we've, we went with a new style we wanted to one. catch a bit more attention so it's uh you know it's not your typical gaming style i would say catch oh here we go yeah Woo! all right right for so for comparison's sake this was the uh this was the old packaging or for some products still the the current ones because we you know there, you have to switch at some point but there are, obviously there will be some products still uh in the market and we just decided that within uh, introducing some new products, they will start using the new packaging pretty much. So that's pretty much what, what we did. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think? Do you, do you guys like the, 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 the old packaging, the red one? Which, I mean, to be honest, it's not bad. You know? Phil Mitchell is saying both look good, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, or the new one. And the new one has, you know, it's a bit more, if you look on the sides and stuff, there's a bit more, uh, I don't know, maybe a bit more recognizability to it. You know, clearly the name on the back, the features nice and bright. Already teasing the switch that's in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you but know. I think if we're looking here, Lucky is teasing it all the time in the background. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's, he's, uh, wait on that side. He's he's <laughs> holding it. Yeah. That's a big switch. <laughs> as long as he as long as he doesn't as long as he doesn't take a bite out of it, you know, <laughs> then uh, then it's all right. Anyway, so uh, yeah, just wanted to show you guys. I think they have a very well. nice click together. No, <laughs> we do have a good click. All right, so here it is. This is the GM08 gaming mouse, uh, optical gaming mouse. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's got the, the, the matte finish going on uh, with a nice touch. Uh, only the dragon lights up, as you can uh, actually. Oh, well, actually, no, that's not true. Uh, the dragon, and on the side here, on the side of the scroll wheel, lights up, and even uh, on the sides of the mouse here there's a little sliver pretty much that uh that also lights up i was thinking of another mouse there that actually only had the dragon light up uh, but this one actually indeed has uh, more led so going three on. different parts on the yes. back on the scroll wheel and on the bottom of exactly the um and uh, it has the nice uh the the side grips the well what we call dragon scale but it's like a little like arrow or boomerang shape uh, i i personally really like the feel of this it's almost like you know it, it 
giving your fingers a massage pretty yeah, much. Yeah, these are important for me because of my sensitivity. I'm smacking around my mouse all yeah. over my mouse pad. Yeah. Same for <laughs> and me. Then you need a good grip on your yeah. mouse. And also, I've been using some of these mice for quite a while. And um, th this, well, it's not really rubber even. Uh, this one is actually hard, but it doesn't wear off. You know, it's not going to. Uh, I have a mouse from another brand. I'm not going to say which one. And uh, especially where I put my thumbs on, uh, on this side, there's like a hole. Because uh, it's like a softer um, rubber that's there, and there's like a hole uh, from from just wear and tear, pretty much, and I, that's bumming me out. So it actually doesn't happen with uh, with these mice. Also, the side switches here, as you can see, the shape is like well, it's a bit pointy. I don't know if you guys can see this, and that's because you know normally if if the if the shape is flat, you actually have to like. You know, the only way to then activ activate it is kind of you know, pressing down like that. Here you can still do that, but this is designed this way so that basically you can also just like flick up or down, well, mostly up. Just by flicking your, your thumb up, you'll press it as well. So it's like, yeah, a little bit easier to press that way. But I don't know if you guys like think or look at that kind of detail in, uh, with, with products like this. <laughs> Ergonomics 1000%. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's pretty simple. It's a, you, you see it's a, a symmetrical design. Uh, I don't want to say uh, ambidextrous because that would be disingenuous uh, because if you want it to be ambidextrous, obviously you would need to have uh, the, the side buttons that you see on this side, you would also have to have on this side so that you can actually use it uh, both left or right-handed. So this one... You still can use it left and right-handed, but can. you will not have the thumb buttons no. available if you're left-handed. No, exactly. So that's At why it, right it's side. symmetrical, so you, yeah. you could use it that way, but indeed the thumb buttons uh, are not on, the, on that side. So for symmetrical use, it's pretty, yeah, it's fine, especially if you prefer that kind of shape. I personally have to say I, I prefer the symmetrical shape, but I also know a lot of people uh, that, that prefer the, the right-handed or what they call ergonomic shape. Um, I think that's pretty strange that you would call one ergonomic and the other not. I mean, both can be ergonomic design, but yeah. Uh, and the scroll wheel has a bit of different, uh, it, it's quite wide actually, uh, compared to some other mice that I know and have used. So, uh, but that means it, uh, it's also quite easy to, to grip uh, with the finger. So I find it very easy to, uh, yeah, to turn that way. I also tried this mouse and what I also like about it is, is that it's rather flat, the scroll wheel. Uh, yes, yeah, it doesn't stick out that much yeah. indeed. And also there's no, I mean, the texture is not like an, an arrow shape on the mouse. Some, some brands or some mice have that indeed, that the, the, the wheel itself has like this, this shape like an arrow uh, in the middle. This one indeed is completely flat. It actually reminds me a little bit of like a race car. Um, like a tire. Wheel tire yeah. indeed. For some reason, I don't know why, but like so slick. So is or this the super soft, the ultra I soft? Mean, or the I'll just call soft? it the slick. You know, <laughs> it's like slicks. <laughs> but it's pretty cool, yeah. They look like intermediates because they have a little bit of profile. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. By the way, if you buy a mouse like this, you can already kind of see it here. But don't forget to remove these because they're just like. Well, actually, I don't know why they're on there. I guess like protection. Not like these skates need protection, but. If you don't remove them, you'll probably have a different experience sliding across the mouse pad. Um, but yeah, and then, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll remove the rest as well while I'm at it. There we go. And there were, so there's four skates on this one on the bottom. Uh, they're a bit smaller than on other mice I, uh, I've seen here, or uh, that we have, I should say. Some, most of the mice have a bit bigger surface area, which also tends to, um, uh, maybe give them a bit more friction, um, potentially, but also, um, you know, the, the bigger the surface, uh, the less likely it is to, uh, that the, uh, these skates or, or mouse feet will wear out or wear down. Especially, I mean, on a, on a soft surface like this, like this is like a, a, a huge mouse pad, this one. Uh, on a soft surface, it's very unlikely to, to uh, wear down anyway. But if you, uh, in, in the past, I've also uh, at home always used like a hard surface mouse pad. And those tend to wear down the, the, the skates a bit. So, yeah. Yeah, especially if you have the really hard plastic mouse pads. Yeah, yeah, the hard surface ones, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it feels very smooth. Uh, there's, there's very little friction. 
Um, and a, another really nice thing about the GM08 is that you can uh, here remove this little cover, the, the shield cover, which I'm going to do right now. Here we go. And then there's three weights here. So, uh, I mean, this is like a, a feature or a trend that, that really comes and goes. And for most people, I guess, they'll just, you know, configure it once the way they like it. Either you like a bit heavier mouse or just as light as possible or anywhere in between. But you'll just configure it once, uh, take out some of the weights, for example, and make it as light as, as possible if you want. What do you prefer? I actually tried it both ways. And strangely enough, I after just you know using it for a couple of minutes, I completely it looks a bit forgot like all Mickey about Mouse it. When you drag them out, sorry. It looks a bit like Mickey Mouse now. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yeah. Don't copyright us, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, Disney. We didn't do this on purpose. <laughs> Damn it, Mike. We didn't know this before this live stream. <laughs> you put us in harm's way. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, but uh, to be honest, I and this may just be because I was, you know, I was not using it uh, while gaming. I was, I was more using it for office work here, um, while actually, you know, trying to do some work. I, I did notice a small difference, but it wasn't that big of a difference that I really thought, hey, you know, I, I should change one way or the other. It's just you do notice it a little bit that you know this way it's a bit uh, lighter and it's easier to throw around, like literally, because that's that's what it's supposed to do yeah. as well. That's and also maybe the also main reason why I always want to have my mouse as light as possible because I yeah. throw a lot around with yeah. my mouse. Well, yeah, you, I mean, you you have um, that's that's also why maybe I'm not noticing it as much because I've got like an I think average uh, mouse sensitivity, as in you know I I do. What I like to do is when I, I just move my wrist, I want to be mm -hmm. able to move from one side of the screen to the other, pretty much. That, that's me. Uh, where I guess you already would require like maybe two moves or something. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it's very personal as well. These, yeah, it's not that in, like for example, in Windows, my sensitivity is not extremely low. It's just in games. Yeah, true. Uh, really? You switch in Windows? Versus game, oh yeah, well, you can yeah, like my in-game in sense is very low, so I don't have to switch. I'm always at the yeah. same DPI setting. Yeah. Um, but you configure yeah. it in the games, I guess. Yeah, in the games, I just put it very low. Right. So usually I take like 70 centimeters. Yeah. To yeah. do a 360 in the shooter. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you can adjust the weight. Like I said, it's uh, I, I find this very personal. You know, so, one, yeah, so some is... persons. So some people will really like this and I like the fact that they can configure the weight and another person will, will like use this mouse for a lifetime and never find out that there are even weights in there or that you can make it lighter or be bothered by that. So it's really down to you and what you prefer. You can always give it a try. Uh, perhaps you'll you'll find out stuff that you didn't uh, know and, and like find out that you <laughs> actually have a preference for a, a heavier mouse or lighter Peter mouse. Peter Jakeways is saying on chat, oh, thanks for that. I didn't remove those plastic things on my GK50. <laughs> hey, hey, let's be honest. If you like having these plastic things at the bottom of your skates and you're doing well with them, by all means, keep them. <laughs> but I think that you run a risk of at some point losing one or two of them and then you'll have like an unbalanced uh, friction going on, so one side will be like smoother than the other, or have a different uh, friction coefficient. So yeah, that might. Screw I see another question in chat: um, Is the cable braided? Uh, for for this one, no. I mean, we can do a close-up view here. This is, uh, I think, what they call uh, rubberized. Yeah, rubberized indeed. It's it's um, well, it's it's smooth, uh, but it's yeah, it's rubberized indeed. So it's not not braided. Uh, later on, you'll see uh, the, the keyboards, for example, they do have the braided cable. And also, um, the, the braided kind of cable, they, they tend to be on the more high-end products. Uh, Still, I honest. personally actually prefer the non-braided ones. Yeah. Because they, to me, the, these kind of cables are a little bit more flexible. That's they don't right. give yeah. you I was drag on your that. mouse pad. Yeah. Um, on keyboards, um, it doesn't matter, of course, because I'm not moving my no. keyboard while I'm playing. Yeah. But for yeah. mice, I do prefer the non-braided ones. Personally. I think, actually, when I'm thinking about it, there are some mice that we have that have the braided cable. But I think uh, I've seen more and more mice uh, with the, the just the rubberized, the, the simple cable, if I'm and the more flexible cable. Because indeed, like you say, that's I think for mouse, it's it's really a, a, a pro to have. You don't uh, want any friction no. or interruption with your movement. Exactly. And if you have like a, a more, um, I don't know, like a stronger cable, more... Um, more stiff. Yeah, stiff indeed. That as you move it around, 
the you know a mouse i'll just remove this here as well so you can see once you get it out of the box usually it'll have these uh because it's it's folded up like this in the box very often once you start using it you will notice um you know it, it'll have these uh well like that it's like a harmonica you know or whatever no not a harmonica what's it called uh accordion um anyway but anyway as you as you're then moving uh, one of these corners here, they might it might hit something or it might snatch something, and then uh, you will you will feel even though you're not directly uh, hitting it with your mouse, but you will feel like a kind of resistance coming from the cable if you're moving upwards, for example, or sideways. So, yeah, that's something that with the cable like this will should be a bit less. Uh, although, if you're doing things right and you're using, for example, a mouse bungee or something, that shouldn't really uh, affect you at all. Or if you just you know. Uh, make sure that the cable is uh, not obstructed. If, if you have a clean desk, let's say, yeah, that, will, that would that. also <laughs> help. That would help. Uh, I see a comment in chat. This one is saying um, uh, that is a nice touch for a feature since uh, light mice uh, feels like I'm holding nothing. So yeah, <laughs> there you really see that some yeah. people really yeah. um, prefer to have a very light mouse and some prefer. Uh, Kevin wants a, a, wants a metal braided one because he needs it puppy proof. <laughs> Yeah, and also um, office chair proof. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, you know the, the rolling uh, office chairs. And I especially roll have over that it. with headsets though. I uh, yeah, I no. can't even remember how many headsets have died on me Broken in, in my in my you know years of being a student or something. You know, sitting in my in my room and then you know constantly rolling over it accidentally, and then at some point the sound just stops and you're like, I did it again, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> So and then you hope you just pulled the plug accidentally. And, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Instead of you know having actually broken the cable. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, need some tough cables for that. Uh, usually they were quite easily replaceable. <laughs> if you can solder a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I usually didn't. I didn't. Yeah, didn't really tamper with that, you know, <laughs> like soldering, because uh, I was uh. afraid I was going to set the house on fire. <laughs> Didn't want to have that on my conscience. So I see a uh, question in chat. Low FPS noobs asking, "What is the weight?" Low FPS noobs always ask that question. No. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. What is the weight? Um, yeah, let's let's see. Actually, because I uh, I pulled up uh, the product page for this one. I, I don't know these things from my uh, mind. Actually, I think it's on the box. It should be. Yeah, here we go. So without the weights, it's 92 grams. Uh, so that's excluding the cable as well. So if you if you take uh, the the weights out of the equation and the weights are uh, five, three, and three, mm -hmm. so that's uh, quick math, uh, 11, 11 grams. So either you can have it at uh, ninety two, which is without the weights, or you can have it uh, at one hundred and what is it? No, one hundred and thirteen. No, no, eleven. One hundred and three uh, grams with all the weights or anything in between, uh, deducting. Five, three, or three. So and I see a lot of people that are curious about the price. Of yeah, the mouse. price. Uh, I think the MSRP should be somewhere around 20, 25 euros. Yeah, I think so. Ish. I believe around twenty in euros, point. maybe twenty, twenty-five in US dollar, somewhere around there. It depends, of course, a little bit on, on your region. It also depends on the the um, tax in your region, yeah. uh, the VAT. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but that's approximately what you can expect. I, I think indeed it will be somewhere around the range of 20, 25 euros, dollars, yeah. something like that, um, pretty much. The bad star, you have a question, what do you call your haircut? Um, actually, I call this, I, I, I badly need to go to, to the barber shop because I, I actually haven't went for a while. But he was saying, I need to tell the lady who cuts my hair next I know, time so I go. It's, it's like a so if you tell you. her, I, I badly need to go haircut? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can, I, I'll be happy to like freeze frame for you for a second so you can take, you know, some screenshots and just show her. Because I think it, there's no words, you know. I think you just have to show her and be like, this, just do this, please. Luckily, your chair can rotate. Can you turn around so he can take yeah, screenshots yeah, yeah, from, yeah, here we go. <laughs> from every angle? <laughs> That's the side. Got it? Yeah. All right, wait, okay. wait. I'll, I'll do this for Screenshot you. Screenshot from the back. Screenshot from the other side because it's not symmetrical. <laughs> no. I, the, Nor the, mouse, the mouse is symmetrical. <laughs> yeah. My head and my haircut, not so much. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, the bad star four. All good? <laughs> no, I, 
he, he says to give me the close-up shot. No, no, you can you can just you know enlarge the picture, so that's all right. So you can <laughs> like cut the rest off there, right there. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. How much DPI? Uh, so it's up to 4,200, um, and it goes in steps of 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and uh, that those are the. Um, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, five presets uh, uh, that you can do with uh, the the DPS or the DPI button here, um, and then uh, using the software, which I can show you later on as well, uh, you can actually go up to four, all the way up to the 4200, but. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Um, the polling rate, or the, the response pretty much, uh, by the way, is uh, 1000 hertz, so that's one millisecond. Uh, and that's like, I think, quite standard, but it's, it's neither good nor bad, it's like just the thing to have. Uh, so I think pretty much all the way up to all the high-end uh, gear as well, it'll probably all have a polling rate of 1000 hertz. I don't know. My for gaming mice it does, for regular mice it's sometimes uh, 125 hertz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for, for gaming mice, it's quite common to have exactly. 1,000 hertz now. I don't know, actually, if it can go any faster. Is that like a limitation of uh, uh, USB also? Um, yeah, in the past, I actually, uh, like when I played a lot of uh, Unreal Tournament 99, like the, the old version, um, the optical sensors back then were not as good. Yeah. Uh, but you could actually improve the uh, sensor performance on your mouse by overclocking the polling rate oh, of your yeah. USB. I remember so, that. The, I had the Microsoft Intelli mouse, and um, by default it was 125 hertz. Yeah. But I overclocked it to 500 hertz. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it it does not only give you a shorter delay, but in that situation it also really it improves activates the sensor hacks performance for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it did make the mouse a lot better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in the past, uh, uh, I remember there was a time where because uh, I see uh, Ridwan is saying optical uh, is better than laser. Yeah, but there was a time when I'm I'm pretty sure that laser uh, beat out optical sensors in terms of uh, accuracy or in terms of I, yeah, I, I would say in terms of tracking that has never been the case. No. Optical has always been the superior type of sensor for tracking. Yeah. Um, laser. But in terms of raw DPS or DPI, DPI, numbers, yeah, at that's a certain thing, point, right? indeed. So they were always saying laser mouse is more accurate because 16 million DPS or something like that. Like bit, bit, bit 10 years ago, for example, there was really this DPI race going on. Yeah. So every vendor tried to put the highest number on the box. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also because a lot of people, including me back then, I, d I didn't know what it meant. I just thought higher is better, right? That's how it works. Um, it, not necessarily, no. Um, I'm one of those persons who, who skipped laser in general, I went um, from a ball mouse to an optical one and only optical since. Um, I tried laser mice, but th they couldn't track properly for me, yeah. uh, especially in the early days of laser. The tracking was, was not on par. No, yeah. Um, and especially if you play on low sensitivity like I do, um, then you just have problems. You try to, to flick around and j your sensor spins out. Yeah. Um, so I've always been using optical and now I think at a certain point, um, the market basically switched back, so it went from optical to laser back yes. to optical for yep. the, the higher end mice. Yep. Um, but yeah, in general, the, the, especially the tracking, which I think is the most important part of, a, of, of an optical sensor or a mouse sensor in general, yeah. is a lot better on optical. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Um, let's see, I've got a... Because uh, I'm seeing some people asking if I can compare something. I've got a GM30 here. Um, so maybe, and this is also, it's um, in terms of the type of mouse, it's not that dissimilar because it's also a symmetrical shape. Um, it, it also has the uh, side buttons on one side, uh, but just to show you guys, you know, a size difference a little bit. So this here is the uh, GM08 and this here is the uh, GM30. So it, the GM30 is just a bit taller. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can catch this, but it's a little bit taller. Uh, the shape's a bit different as well. Steve Barker is saying, have you been talking almost 40 minutes about a 20 pound mouse? Yeah, yes, I know, right? <laughs> we just did. I know, I know. <laughs> did um, you like it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Uh, but yeah, there's, there's, there are some differences between these mice, of course, the, 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 the sensor is different, uh, so the GM30 has a little bit of a higher end uh, optical sensor, obviously it has a bit more RGB going on here as well. Um, it is lighter, I think, especially without, uh, well, it doesn't have a weight system, uh, so it's quite light anyway. Um, and, uh, but as you can see, this one also has the, the rubberized cable, so the GM30. Mike, I think you have a uh, GM50 on the table, right? Which is the right-handed yes. one. I have it right in front of me. Let me show. The cable is long enough. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. And I think that one, I mean, it's, it's hard. You don't have a close-up cam, but I think yeah. you also have a, uh, it's a uh, rubberized cable, right? Yes, it is a rubberized yeah, cable. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. Uh, overall, overall, I would say it's a pretty, uh, pretty decent mouse. Uh, I'll show you uh, later on, because uh, once I cover the, the keyboard as well, we're going to move also into the software. Um, so I'll show you guys what you can do. Uh, obviously, being a, a more entry-level mouse, uh, you, you don't get that much options, uh, but you get like the basic. I think you can, you can change the DPI, and it's, uh, that's pretty much it for this mouse. But I mean, for, for, for $20 pounds, uh, euros, pretty much, uh, that, that's pretty good. You, you get a pretty solid... Uh, good mouse. Uh, and I think you can also control the lighting, right? Like switch it off if you don't want yes, to. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so you get, like yeah, I, sorry, yeah. I was talking about like actual hardware control, but if you want to yeah. talk about like, for example, lighting control, uh, it has uh, some lighting control indeed. You can do some basic effects, which I'll show you later on. Um, mm -hmm. But also it's not, it's not as expansive, uh, expanded uh, in, in terms of effects and, and things you can do as uh, some of the higher end gear, which makes sense because, you know, it's, it's, again, it's more entry level mouse. This is more, again, if you want a, a solid mouse uh, that doesn't break the bank, but it still gives you some nice options to play around with and uh, yeah, decent accuracy, uh, good tracking. Just a, just a good mouse. Gonzalez right. asking yes. how much is the maximum weight in a new mouse? So I believe it was 92 grams, and you have 11 grams in weight, so 103 grams, yes. excluding the cable, is the maximum yes, correct. weight. Correct. Yeah. Yes, that is very much correct. Yeah. So uh, also, I have it on my table here. So and this one is actually connected. That's why I couldn't pull it out too far. Um, that's why I used the, the disconnected one to show you guys. But I'll be showing you guys uh, in a game later on as well, a little bit uh, while I'm using it. Uh, I'm, I'm out of practice, but let's see. I can use it. Right then, moving on. <laughs> Harmit is saying, okay, so you guys are using a green screen. I think it is a real background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it is a green screen, to be honest. But uh, we, we do make it look nice, don't we? I mean, this is uh, obviously one of our designers uh, makes the, the, our backgrounds and, and like visuals, like the name tags and stuff like that for us, uh, for, for the stream each week. Now it's um, gone. It appears black aww. now. But, uh, <laughs> I prefer yes, this. Yes, we can control the background. I prefer this. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Cool. If you think, uh, if you thought it was real, that's a real compliment to uh, to the guys making that background. So yeah, then, the let's move is on. saying social distancing is still enforced in the EU. Yes. Yes. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Here in the Netherlands, where we're located, uh, it's at least one and a half meters. Yeah. But now we're a little bit further apart from each other. Yeah. Just for safety reasons. Exactly. Um, any game mouse uh, with ball mechanic? No, not anymore. That's been a while. Uh, no, I, I still remember, you know, having to having to break out the ball at the bottom and then clean it and you know clean the sensors or whatever the, the contacts basically, and then you know it was because it would get there would get you would have dirt or something in there at some point, and then during a game you would get the ball freezing in place, so you actually you stop moving and it's like no no. <laughs> I remember when I was in high school, then I wanted to, to work a bit in the library and very often look at the mouse and the ball is gone. <laughs> that <laughs> happened so many times. Or do you, do you mean like, because I also they I took had the a ball, mouse with the a ball out of the mouse. I think it was a, like, I think a track ball. Yeah, in fact, the, the bigger one. That's, that you, that's what yeah. it was called, right? It had like a, a big, big red ball on, yeah. on top. Or yeah, blue, I still or, have yeah, that you had one. several versions black. I, I actually went through a box the other day in my house. Uh, like, you know, the, the box a lot of you guys will also have, like in the attic or whatever, wherever you store things that you think, well, maybe one day I can still use this. Um, and that was one of the things that I really thought I, I should get rid of this, but it's such an oddity that I kind of, it's almost like a museum piece. Like, I can't believe I, I use this thing at some point because it's such it's so ridiculous and actually you, because the idea behind it was i think that it was like supposed to be ergonomic you know everybody thought doing this with your hands was bad over and over again uh, but doing this with your fingers the whole friggin' day and, and like that or some some of them were actually only with your thumb you know they were yeah on the right side so you had like a mouse with a trackball on it basically yeah i remember doing that and, and honestly after like a couple of hours my hands and my tendons in my hand were beginning to hurt and and 
feel irritated because it you know that's a lot of movement for your fingers and they're not used to doing that the whole time so that was actually way worse for your uh, there, let's or, just say there's a reason why i think <laughs> why i think you can't really or you don't tend to find them now anymore in shops but it was funny though it was a funny experience uh, Peter is saying, I've got the standard GK50, it's a great keyboard. The standard GK50? I think, maybe the low profile one? I think, um, don't think there's a Yeah, there's, there's multiple ones, so let me also explain one. that a little bit. So indeed, we yeah. have the, uh, actually I have it here, the GK50 low profile, which is also a great keyboard, uh, but like, it's, like the name says, it's low profile, so that means, you know, the, the switches are low profile and it's more like a flat keyboard. Um, compared to the, uh, the, the GK50 Elite. So this is the GK50 low profile. The reason why this thing is called the GK50 Elite and not the GK50 is because there actually indeed was a GK50 already. But uh, I think it was a, a product that was only sold quite locally, um, I believe in uh, China, in the Chinese market pretty much. So um, yeah, and this is a product which is um, somewhat similar to it, question mark, I can't remember. Uh, but at least it, it had like a, a similar, uh, uh, you know, price point and uh, positioning because that's also where the, how the, the name is created. Uh, the, the first number, at least, uh, it determines the kind of like how high end or uh, yeah, how high end the product is pretty much. So this is like supposed to be middle of the range pretty much um, and also by uh, determined by a certain price point. MLO is saying I've bought the uh, MSI Viger GK50 low profile yesterday and I'm in love. Oh, there you go. You've well, also I, been using that for a while, right? I can't blame you. Yeah, I really still like using. that one. Especially, yeah. I mean, for both for gaming, but especially for office work, because um, it just makes typing a lot uh, uh, more fun, more satisfying uh, for some reason. Um, and it's hard to explain. Like I said, it's a, it's a, um, it's a personal preference as well. So some people, I mean, I, I know you tend to like these these higher keycaps and, and you yeah. know, like a, a strong keyboard with uh, sturdy yeah, keys. Yeah, I, I like the high profile one. I exactly. make less mistakes on a high profile keyboard, less yeah. typing errors than yeah. on a low profile one. Yeah. But it, it all depends on your liking and your typing style. And yeah, if you're exactly. A, Button basher like I am, then <laughs> the angry, <laughs> the angry the strong worded letter guy. Exactly. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, see a question um, if the uh, Viger GK50 Elite Blue will be available in the Philippines and in India. Uh, please check with your uh, yeah. local retailer because I'm not sure which models will be available in which yeah. exact region. Because that actually can the, differ per region. There are two different versions uh, of the GK50 Elite at the moment, at least. Perhaps in the future we'll have more different versions because there are a lot of different switches. But at the moment there is the GK50 Elite uh, Blue, like you mentioned, which uses the uh, blue, the kale blue switch, uh, and there is the uh, uh, GK50 Elite Box White which uses the kale box white switches. And the difference between those two switches we're going to be explaining to you. Uh, the, uh, yeah, it, it, it was actually, uh, I think, announced also, but I'm not sure if it's available yet. So I know that the, the other two, uh, so the, the blue and the box white, are actually uh, in circulation, if you want to call it that. Uh, <laughs> so Michael gets a vigor us with the keyboard. Yeah, he does. Definitely. Um, <laughs> Uh, the red one, I'm not sure uh, when that one is going to be available, so that's why I didn't mention it yet. But like I said, and also there's maybe even other switches uh, coming depending on uh, demand and, and what, what we think uh, yeah, you guys want and what will do well. Or what you're telling us you guys want, so if you have certain suggestions. Yeah, I mean if you guys know your keys and you know exactly what you like, let us know. Yeah, just drop in chat, what is your favorite type of mechanical switch? Yeah. I'm curious yeah. to see. Um, so before we go into the switches, I'll just uh, show you the keyboard as well. Maybe it's already actually time to do a giveaway. What do you think about that? That's a good idea. So if you haven't participated yet, go yeah. to msi.com slash two slash insider. Um, the bot will also uh, put a direct link to Gleam in chat on YouTube and Twitch. And our first Winner of the day. US dollar Steam wallet code will go to. Drum roll. Drum roll. Oh, difficult name. That one's for you. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, the. Ed Mark. Ed Congratulations. Mark. Congrats. 
you want the first 20 US dollar Steam wallet code, keep yes. an eye on your mailbox because we will email it to you uh, in exactly. the coming days. We've got your contact details, so we'll make sure you get the code in the coming days. Congratulations. Let me see the comments in chat. Uh, Optical Mechanical, Cherry MX, Cherry MX Brown. Yeah. Uh, I love red switches. Uh, Gator on yellows. That's uh, a, a lot of saying different I only ones. experienced rubber dome keyboard. Yeah. Oh, Edwin, you should try Mechanical. Mm. It's nice. I, I always heard people saying that you know the the, the mechanical is like superior and stuff like that. It's maybe it, it, in some respects yes, but I also know a lot of people who who just think you know they've tried mechanical, they don't really see the difference. They, what they do see is a, a huge increase in price, which yes, they are way more expensive. Uh, they're and also usually sometimes. more durable, so yeah. it's it's a good investment. Uh, but some people just don't like that. You know the, the the sharp feel of them. Uh, they they like the the more soft feel of the the rubber dome. And yeah, you know that's Caesar fine. saying Telios. Okay, interesting no. choice. Interesting yeah. choice. Telios right. are more of the the enthusiast type of, of switch. Yeah, quite quite yeah. yeah. The, not mainstream, I would guess. But the one uh, Lucky is holding and that we will show later on today is also not. Not as mainstream. No, but um, we're hoping that we can help to make it more mainstream. Yeah. Um, actually, so we can maybe also look at the box because there you can see uh, if you if you find this in a shop or something uh, at the front, you can't see which switch, right? Because it's uh, yeah, it just shows the keyboard. It says GK50 uh, Elite mechanical keyboard. But if you then switch to the bottom side, there you go. So here it says uh, the layout. Of course, it's uh, at the moment here is a US layout what we've got. But here it is the box white switch and it shows a picture as well. So that's where you can make sure if you want either blue or box white or whatever we're going to come out with uh, this one, that you have the right one that you prefer. Uh, and on the back also, uh, here you have the the, oh, uh, the general uh, features of the keyboard. So of course, um, yeah, hotkeys uh, for rapid control, which I'll show you as well. But also at, in this part of the uh, color box on the back, there is a detailed description of the uh, the switch that is in there in this case. Well, I think both uh, blue and box white are clicky mechanical box switches. So it applies to both of them. But yeah, so just so you can make sure if you have a strong preference for one or the other that you uh, don't get the wrong one. So let's do a little bit of an unboxing. Um, this box opens like this, two lips here. And then you just remove or open it like this. I see and a question inside. on Periscope. Um, can you show the space bar inside? Explain why it is so soft versus low profile. What do you mean with soft? <laughs> uh, well, let's find out. I don't think the space bar is particularly soft. Uh, well, let's see. So inside the box you will find the keyboard itself, uh, which is wrapped in plastic, which I'll take off. Here we go. There it is. Uh, as you can see, floating key design with a nice uh, build-up of uh, the shape, pretty much, like from, from low to, to high uh, on the top of the keyboard. Um, braided cable, of course, with a gold-plated USB for, well, it's, I think they say it's, it's more for like a, a corrosion, which in, in if it's really uh, moist in your country, you know, if you have like a, uh, high moisture uh, uh, thing going on. It could potentially happen that in, in uh, like normal, I think it's aluminum uh, casings of the USB, it, it could start to form a little bit of rust or corrosion, but I personally haven't really seen it happen. Uh, but with gold plated, it should really pretty much never happen. They should uh, eliminate that risk completely. Uh, the keyboard itself, the molding uh, the, of the bottom, especially uh, this shape here, I can show you more like this. There you go. It forms like a, a channel where you can uh, put your, uh, for example, your, your headset uh, cable, run it underneath so it, uh, it doesn't have to run like next to the keyboard or somewhere else. So you can actually keep things in one place. It's a nice touch. Did one is asking, does it come with uh, a wrist rest or is that sold no, separately? No, no, it's uh, that's uh, sold separately indeed. Uh, but we're going to get to that after uh, after this uh, covering this keyboard. Um, 
some nice touch as well there's uh, we've paid special attention to make sure that all parts of the keyboard are equally uh, supported so you get uh, like very limited amounts of flex so there's the the feet at uh, several points uh, and of course you can if you want um, put the keyboard up a little board a little bit uh, at the uh, top end to yeah put it a little bit higher i actually uh, i used to do this with every keyboard just because i thought it you know it, it it was what i liked uh, but recently i started putting it down actually leaving it down and that actually uh, for me yeah is now what i prefer because <laughs> and it makes sense because if i put it up higher uh, the the back end like this as you can see what it does to my hand is it, it creates a little well, this is a bit of extreme of course but it creates a bit more angle which you know I, I need to stretch my hands more where if it's more flat it's more of a relaxed um, yeah my hand stays a bit more relaxed so uh, but again this is really up to personal preference and I guess if you try stuff you, you'll find out what what you like best I see an ASMR request can you please run your fingernail along the braid I want to hear the material what <laughs> Okay, uh, well, I, I, that one is, I guess, okay. Let's see if we can do that. Some mechanical keyboard cable ASMR for you right here. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that, but that's, I guess. Um, yeah, inside the box, quick start guide, obviously. Um, also some nice other things, which... Uh, well, maybe you'll use, maybe you'd never use it. But a keycap puller, um, and this one, I mean, there are different types of key, keycap pullers. In the past, I think we've included some, uh, some plastic ones, which were quite rigid. And those ones were a bit, maybe tough even to get into, uh, in between the keys. Um, this one is a wire keycap puller. And I'm just trying to get the extra keycaps out of the box as well. They're quite well attached with uh, some tape, <laughs> just holding it in place. So get the box out of the way. Um, here we go. So a wire keycap puller. There we go. With a nice uh, MSI shield shape to where you can hold it. Uh, this makes it really easy to uh, yeah, remove keycaps like that. You just uh, position it over the keycap. Actually, you have to spread it out a little bit. Come on. Usually you do this with two hands. I'm trying to do it with one now because I can then here you go, and then you just click it uh, under or uh, yeah uh, um, on both sides of the switch, pretty much, and you can pull it out oh, quite easily like that. So it's quite effortless, and uh, it, it really you can use these uh, wired keycap pullers with pretty much any keyboard because it doesn't matter how much space you have in between the keys. What uh, I like about the wired keycap puller compared to the, the regular basic plastic one that most people will probably know. Um, is that you cannot damage the side of your keycaps yep. when you put it on the keycap. Yeah. When you have the plastic one, it will basically scratch a little bit on the yeah, side. Yeah, it will push them pretty much out of the way, right? Yeah, Almost. You will, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Uh, and there are some extra keycaps included, or at least for the uh, control and alt keys, uh, which are, um, I always forget which one is which. Uh, one is concave and the other is convex, and I think the hollow one, so this is uh, concave, if I'm correct. So this, as you can see, is a hollow shape. And this, especially from the side, uh, well, yeah, here we go. Maybe that's the right way to do it, here we go. So one of them is, uh, this one is more hollow, concave, uh, concave, I guess, and the other one is convex. So it's actually pointing outwards, uh, and again, this really depends on what you like. Uh, apparently, some uh, people, some gamers, have very strong, uh, yeah, very strongly like or dislike one or the other, or uh, just makes it. Especially when it's um, the Alt and Control keys, uh, which you tend, especially during games, you tend to press them not really with your strongest of fingers. It's it usually comes down if you're a WASD player like uh, like this. Let's see if I can do this. Oh man, this is this is awkward holding it like this, but that's fine. Uh, so it'll be like your your pinky, you know. And so um, convex, uh, or sorry, concave works well, but convex when it's uh, a bit more, um, you know, bulging out, I guess, just makes it a little bit lighter to press, is what they told me. Uh, I I really haven't experienced it like that. I've tried it. 
I did feel a difference, uh, but it, it wasn't clearly for me that one was, um, you know, more comfortable or easier to press than the other. That's uh, a question from Bobby Studio. Is Mystic Light supported? Yes, of course. Uh, in, in the Dragon Center software, uh, as uh, Mystic Light is uh, included in that software these days. And another question from Bobby Studio, uh, any custom MSI brand keycaps as a limited edition? Uh, yes, these are custom, and I hope I can show you guys here as well. Um, there are a couple of things custom about it. So the it's not as a limited edition, this is on a any of them. Yeah, exactly. But the sense. shape, I mean, there is obviously something. I'm just going to remove one of them so it's maybe easier to show you guys close up. Here we go. So the shape for one, so it's uh, what we call octagonal. So as you can see, uh, normally you have like the, the, the four sides, uh, but this one actually on the corners also has like a, a more of a squared off um, yeah, shape. So it becomes more octagonal. Uh, of course, the, one of the keys has the dragon, which is uh, for us, it's like the, the function key, um, which you can then, if you press that together with some of the, uh, oh, the hot keys, like th these are, for example, uh, under the arrow keys, there are some other uh, icons here, which stand for functions uh, like hotkeys that you can do with the lighting without having to install any software. So you can do, you can play around a lot with uh, effects. So this, for example, if you press the uh, the dragon key and this list icon here, you will cycle through the the predefined effects on the keyboard. Um, here, I think you can instantly uh, change the direction, so either left or right. Um, here you can do the same, but then you can you can choose. So you, you'll say, all right, I want to have it one way or I, I want to have it uh, going the other way. Here you can adjust the speed. So either you want the animation or the effect to go faster or slower. Um, uh, here you can uh, up and down, I think, is the brightness. So up, of course, will be you know brighter, brighter. Uh, this one will be uh, lower in brightness or completely off if you keep pressing it. Um, and here you can, if you have like a solid uh, color, or like a breathing, but in, in a single color, you can very easily cycle through um, the, the colors um, by pressing the, the dragon key and this one at the same time. Um, here you have some, some media keys at the top, so you've got uh, volume, you've got uh, track selection, and uh, you know, f forward, stop, play, pause, uh, things like that. And a really neat thing that they included here as well is a dedicated hotkey. And I think this is pre-programmed. Uh, not sure if it's in the keyboard or if it's in, uh, I think it's in the keyboard because you don't require any software, you shouldn't. But if you've got Afterburner running, or sorry, uh, installed on your PC, and you uh, do the Dragon Key plus uh, F1, it should uh, start Afterburner for you. If you haven't configured Afterburner to start when the system starts when it boots of course so normally you would do that if you don't then you can still do that and afterburner should uh, start running so Edwin that's a K nice is addition. asking is it possible to replace the switches with other kill switches um i'm not sure because i think these switches i'm just going to take one off and as you can I see am. here they're, they're soldered so you would have yes. to desolder them yep. uh, of course that is not covered under warranty no. so technically yes you you can replace them yeah but not within the warranty no, they're not uh, hot conditions. swappable if that's what you mean no no exactly they're not meant to be swapped indeed um as you can see it has a nice uh I think we call this an aircraft grade aluminum, which is basically it's just it has a certain quality, uh, but a, a base plate, which gives the, the product more rigidity, you know, it, it gives it less flex, so it's actually quite sturdy. There, you can't really flex it that much, uh, which is great if you're a rage gamer and you go, you know, whacking your keyboard. No, don't ever do that. Uh, it's a shame, especially if, I, if you have a good keyboard, uh, you don't want to uh, destroy it that way. Um, and it's also quite easy to keep clean because of the, the floating key design. So it's very easy if you just remove the keycaps, um, you know, you can very easily just clean in between them. Because you know, it's going to happen if you, if you play a lot, uh, maybe you eat at your PC, which a lot of people tend to do. Or dust will get in between, or hairs. Or... So it's quite easy to keep clean as well. And when Kay is asking, can you change pre-programmed RGB? Uh, that's a good question. I, I honestly don't know. I know you can, in the software, you can, uh, it gives you more control. So there you can like customize effects or at least you can create a custom or maybe multiple custom uh, modes. But I'm not quite sure um, 
that you can change the presets, uh, which also I don't know if you would want to, because you can just create your own. And the presets are really meant for you know the people that don't want to install software, um, but do want to have you know control of their RGB and, and change the effects uh, at the same time. The software is most useful also if you want to uh, sync up all the effects between, uh, for example, your mouse, your headset. Uh, your motherboard, uh, your case, just all the RGB in your system. Your monitor even? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So any RGB you have in your system with uh, uh, either MSI uh, products or third-party software, uh, sorry, third-party hardware products that are supported by the Mystic Light system, uh, Mystic Light Sync, then you can uh, yeah, sync everything up and, and make it do the same effect or the same colors to uh, really complement your build. I think we did that a while ago, a long time ago actually, in a stream that was called RGB All the Things. And I we put did a lot RGB, of RGB in a system. We did RGB All the Things. And as we also sync it up with the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, uh, that, was the, that was a, a new thing then as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Paul is asking spill shield shielding. Um, the keyboard itself does not have any specific spill shielding. Um, but for example, the, the switches in the uh, box yes. white version. I believe they are IP56 rated. Yes, exactly, um, which is dust and moisture yeah. proof. But yeah. note that the keyboard itself is not covered no. under that's, uh, that's warranty if you That's only scale. the switch indeed. So yeah, I mean, I have, switch. A, I have a switch here. Maybe we can show the close-up. So this is a uh, box white switch. I don't know if it's going to focus on this one. Focus maybe. camera, you can do it. Focus. But as you can see, the, the whole box thing refers to the square shape around the little uh, cross-shaped stem. So this stem uh, is the thing that usually in, in all other and in normal keyboards, I, th I dare say even in this one, holds the uh, keycap in place. So if I take a keycap off, here at the bottom you can see it's a round shape and, and a cross uh, and that slides over the middle part, so that's what's called the stem of the switch. Uh, and the box shape around it, so that's the square shape around the stem, is what holds the, uh, well, basically any moisture and dust out of it. Uh, but also it tends to, because it, uh, well, obviously this slides all the way down into it, um, so the box shape a lot of times will also reach the inside uh, and the top of the keycap. So in doing that, and also support the sides of this round shape here, and in doing that, it will also often create a, a more solid feeling. So if you know uh, what key wobble is, you know, if you put this thing on here, for example, and I mean, key wobble is when you do this, right? And some keycaps, I mean, it, it, yes, th this one is uh, not connected to a keyboard, so it's going to wobble a bit more. But um, a lot of keyboards, especially if you have the, only the stem, you will probably notice that there is a bit more key wobble or key cap wobble than on a uh, box switch. So that's also why a box switch tends to give you a little bit more of a solid uh, feel uh, because there's less yeah, movement um, left to right or top to bottom. There's less wobble pretty yeah, much. It's a more stable design basically. Bit more, a bit more stable platform indeed. Um, do you have the GM30 near you? The GM30? Uh, yeah, I had it here just a moment ago. Because there we have a similar type of design. It's not a mechanical keyboard. Oh, GM is a mouse. I thought you were oh, talking no, sorry, about the GK. mouse. Oh, no, sorry, GK. Sorry, I was talking about a keyboard. GK. GK30. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Is this the one? Yes. Yeah. Although the GK30, here you see. Um, and I can just hold them side by side or well, on top of each other. Um, so this is the, the top one is the GK30, and this is a mechanical keyboard, um, which I'll, I'll sh try and ASMR this for you guys as well, closer to my uh, uh, microphone later on, so you can also hear the difference between the, the keys as I as I press them. But obviously the um, uh, membrane keyboard is going to be a bit more well uh, soft, dampened sound pretty much, like a bit mushy maybe. Uh, but Indeed, I think you were talking yeah. about indeed yeah, one indeed. of the keycaps. So, 
And because this, this keyboard also gives a very solid feel and there's, there's very little wobble in the keys compared to uh, a lot of other keyboards, even compared to some uh, mechanical keyboards. And that's because of this shape. So it also, it has this box shape, as you can see, around the stem. And it's a bit hard to see maybe because it's, here we go, it, it's transparent uh, plastic, transparent material. But you can see the cross shape and then the box around it. So this box will also protect it a bit against the uh, dust and moisture, because it'll give it gives it extra protection. But it also makes it feel a bit more solid when you're uh, typing on it, indeed. I think that's what you uh, yeah. wanted to show, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um. <laughs> the Kingdom is saying the keys are more stable than my mental health. Aww. <laughs> That sounds so sad. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's all right, man. It's, uh, we're here for you, man. Every week, we're here for you. We got your back. Um, yeah, what else can I show you about this keyboard? I mean, um, maybe, maybe we should go into the switches a bit. So uh, as you could see, if I remove this one here, or a random switch uh, or a random keycap, uh, this one here you can see is the white box shape or the white box switch, I should say. Uh, I've also got another sample here of the GK50 Elite and that one is actually connect connected right now so let me see if I can disconnect it real quick Whoa. here we go yes and this one ta-da is a blue and as you can see there's no box around the stem here so this is a type of mechanical switch that most people will know the type of mechanical switch. Yeah. Um, these come from uh, Kale as well. Yes. Um, but this is a similar design that you will, for example, see uh, with Cherry MX Blue. Um, you yeah. will also see it with Gator on Blue switches. Yeah. Um, so they all use a similar design philosophy, basically. Um, that differs quite a bit from the box switch, so you'll, you'll see later on in detail. Yeah, in we, we've prepared a few slides because we, we do want to, you know, there's, there's uh, like two main elements we want to highlight. One is like the factual element. Uh, that's what we're going to show you in the slides. It's like, you know, with the numbers. So you're going to see differences in the, 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 the force that's needed to press down, the travel time and all that kind of jazz. Um, and there's of course the experience element. Uh, so it's it's, and I think the experience element in the end is the thing that's most important because numbers can can say a lot of things, but really it's down to what you prefer and what you feel most comfortable typing on or gaming on. Uh, that that's what matters most, and what's going to ultimately lead to you making um, well a decision that that. Uh, makes you happy, you know. That when, whenever you're using the keyboard, you just feel like, yes, this was a this was a good uh, decision. I love this keyboard. I just love typing on it, gaming with it, because that's in the end what you want. That it's really really satisfying to uh, to type or uh, yeah to game on. Vitata is asking: Show spacebar comparison versus low profile. Uh, I, I can, yeah, sure, because I've got the low profile right here. So I don't know. I'm curious to find out what you mean uh, by because yeah, I I'm think also not completely you, you, you were saying something about softer, right? So the top one, this is the GK50 low profile. <clears throat> this is the GK50 uh, Elite, which is the higher profile one. So I'm not quite sure. I mean, do you want to see the keycap itself or? What's also really nice about the um the keycaps is that you can replace them yourself if you want to. For example, these yeah. by default, they are uh, ABS keycaps on there. Yeah. Um, but it's a completely standard keyboard layout. Even the bottom row is completely yeah. standard. Um, so for, for the, let's see, for the... Yeah, for low profile, of course, you need a different stem. So there you cannot just use any yeah. keycap. As you can see on the inside. So there you need special keycaps. Yeah, it's but a for different the... shape. It's not just a cross shape. It's uh, mm -hmm. something that really slots into these two uh, areas here but for the elite version and it doesn't matter whether that's the elite blue or the elite red or the box white because they're all uh, compatible with the um, cherry mx type of keycap mm -hmm. and because it has standard layout it's um, really suitable to use custom key keycaps as well if you like that 
If okay, you're so into you, you, using custom keycaps, if you want to uh, use PBT keycaps, if you want to use pudding keycaps, all those different kind of uh, custom keycaps, yeah. you can do that with uh, GK50 yeah. Elite. Yeah. So uh, Vitarta is saying uh, he, he means flexible, so not soft, but flexible. Um, and flexible. I, I maybe I understand uh, somewhat because indeed this keycap, or sorry, yeah, this keycap is uh, thinner than this one, so it has less. There's less material pretty much so this one is bound to be a little bit stiffer um, than this one but simply Fitata because i was saying that the, yeah now that the other one was softer but i don't really flexible. understand what you mean with software do you mean flexible or what yeah that's that's what he's saying right? as yeah. in what i see in the chat now uh he's saying sorry flexible ah, okay yeah and that kind of makes some sense but it shouldn't flex too much uh, I, i'm surprised if you will really notice the difference yes it will have a different feel to it obviously uh, but that might be more inherent to the fact that this is a low profile uh, keyboard and a, and a different uh, switch type uh, so th this is the i think it's called the chalk white right yeah yeah also from kale by the way uh, these uh, low profile the kale switches low profile lights, yeah. mechanical uh, with the it, well they're the clicky type as well audible and tactile click um, but yeah i i would say and I maybe let's see if i can quickly remove these keycaps. Good question from uh, Philip. He's asking, yeah. are those keyboards full plastic or aluminum by any chance? Uh, they're a mix. So uh, they've got a, wow, this one is really on there. Um, they've got a um, plastic body, both of them. This is the GK50 low profile, so a plastic body, but a, a brushed aluminum or an aircraft grade aluminum uh, top, top layer, layer yeah. which uh, gives it more well, of course, it looks cool, but it also gives it a bit more rigidity, so it actually has less flex. And that's also where the switches are located. They are yes. basically uh, inside of the aluminum plate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm just going to remove the keycap. Wow, these are really stuck on there. So these are a bit difficult, more hard to remove, and I can show you why. Because they're not fixed <laughs> like other Don't keys. Don't try that at home, by the way, no. the way <laughs> Peter just removed that keycap. Well, I, I did it. Uh, <laughs> I, I've done that before. I just know it. Uh, yeah, like a bit of force. now you of course have only one hand available. But yes. if you remove your space bar because there are stabilizers on both sides, yeah, always use two hands on either side and uh, then gently pull it off. Yes, if on you these want to remove here. it. There's, these are the stabilizers. Yeah. So that's why it's it's not just fixed with one. Uh, you know, on, on the, the switch itself, which the switch is in the middle, but you've also got two stabilizers uh, here to help the uh, space bar. Uh, you know, not. If you press it on one side, otherwise it would just you know wobble completely to one side or the other. So you need those stabilizers. Uh, but yeah, if you if we look at the keycaps themselves, so this is the one from the GK50 low profile, and this is the one from. Uh, I'm still a little bit surprised because Vitata is saying it will be amazing if it's the same strong construction in a lead spacebar. Well, the thing is, you can see the. Um, uh, low profile actually has like on the inside of the keycap it has a bit of a an extra structure to help it you know yeah. be stronger and, and uh, prevent flex a bit more but that's because it's it's very thin yeah exactly. like the the nature of the the keycap for a regular profile one um yeah is already you don't need extra support no. this this is by far this can even handle my typing yeah. so then it should be good for anyone yes and this one indeed is strengthened a little bit on the inside just to give it a bit of extra strength and, and make sure that no matter how angry you type on it you don't get flex also another thing not, now that we're looking into this by the way and i don't know if some of you guys know this but there seems to be like a, a i don't know if you want to call it like a it's not really a cult but like a, a following of people who tend to do something special with their space bar <laughs> I'm one of them. Mine is I know, I know, I, I noticed that, and I've actually given it a, a, a go because I was curious. Because this was one of these things where I thought I read about it and I was like, "Nah, that sounds like you know, bullshit." And then you saw my keyboard on the desk. But, but then, no, then I thought, okay, well, wait a minute, let's just try it and see if there's any truth to it, right? Because well, normally your space bar is on just like all the other keys, right? So it'll be, if you look at it this way, um, it will be with the the high side will be pointed towards you, right? And the high side, I mean this. So basically when, and the, the idea is that when you type, for most people, um, no wait, I have this one here, where I did remove the space bar. So here you can see it, right? So 
the idea is a lot of people, they will use their thumbs uh, when they're typing, you know, they will use their thumb to press the space bar. And what you do then is you put your thumb up next to it, basically, and what you do is you have like a, almost, the, you know, the corner of the space bar is like digging into your thumb pretty much because you've got like the, the angle straight at your thumb. Um, so depending on how you type, um, yeah, that's going to, at some point, you're going to be irritated because you, you're constantly hitting the angle at the most extreme point with your thumb. So what they do, and this is my, maybe something you can try at home as well if you want, is to reverse uh, the placement of the spacebar. So no, where normally you would have it like, uh, let's just hold it over it, like this. What they do is they take it off gently and turn it around like this and then put it back on. So I'm going to see if I can do that. And it will look a bit odd at first because it just literally it just makes the space bar like point the other way. I mean this this one is, is actually fixed now, right? There's this is how it's uh, how it should be fixed. Then. Yeah, it's properly Yes, it's not, it's not loose, it's not going to fall off. Yeah. Uh, and you can do this. I mean, it works with the uh, uh, mounting mechanism. Uh, so it, 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 you can do this. Um, and what that does is it will make your thumb, when you're pressing it, you will hit, it, it's more like you hit the actual surface instead of the, the, the corner of the keycap. And it, it's really funny because I never really thought about this. But it, once you start using it and you start getting used to it, it actually makes quite a lot of sense. And it just feels a little bit nicer because you're not hitting like the, the angle, like a hard, uh, yeah, a hard corner, but you're hitting like the flat surface with your thumb. And it's, it's so funny. I never considered it. And I, I, I read it and I was like, nah, come on. It's, no, because, you know, if this was the case and everybody <laughs> agrees that this is more comfortable, then keyboards would be like this out of the box, right? Because it's more ergonomic. Uh, so I thought there's a reason why why we don't do that, but you know you can try it. And then I've got mine here. I'm part of that yeah, <laughs> reversed yeah, exactly. space bar gang. <laughs> I I this was really like an eye opener for me. I really <laughs> thought, wait a minute. So this is actually this works, and this is actually it feels quite nice. And and also it, you know the key itself, the, the space bar. There's no you're not obstructing the 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 travel time or, or the, the way it works in any way by the way uh, at least not as far as i've noticed on our uh, keyboards so but yeah this was baffling for me it was uh quite fun it's pretty nice huh <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah anyway um yeah so let's let's dive into the keycaps guys i mean sorry for that little tangent there uh did want to share that with you guys uh but let's dive into the keycaps uh let's see so i've prepared a few slides for you guys here we go yeah so here we see uh, these are the what we call the common uh, types of mechanical switches these are the most common you will see in in uh, mechanical keyboards also in our uh, uh, earlier mechanical keyboard so I believe we had uh, ooh, let's see GK80 GK70 and before that even a GK701 I think uh, and they all use these common types. Um, I actually still have one of those at home, GK701. Yeah. That yeah. was a Cherry MX brown one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the middle one. Um, and here is where all the difference comes from as well with uh, the, the colors. Um, so you, you can see we, here, we, I mean, there's a small selection. There's many, many more, as you already saw in the chat as well. But here's a small selection of a, a few um, main i think these are also maybe some of the most popular uh in in the mainstream segment at least right uh so there's red yeah, nowadays, brown and indeed, blue yeah. these are the most common ones and you have yeah. them from different brands so you have them yes. from kale you have them from cherry yeah. cherry mx yeah. you have them from gatoron you got them from a lot of different vendors but yeah. they all use a similar design philosophy yeah but not all of them use the exact same color for the same type of switch so that's where it can get a little bit confusing but in our case um, I think w they are uh, at least for these three I know for sure that these are uh, accurate for I think both uh, cherry and, and kale, uh, kale yeah. indeed uh, so these are the the yeah the, the regular switch I'm just trying to see yeah so these are the ones that I showed you before with the blue switch right you remember that one uh, you know not they don't have the box around the stem these ones um, that you are seeing on screen now so uh, from left to right, 
you can see the, the linear red switch and linear really says it, uh, it's a linear movement. So that means that there is no tactile or audible click or bump anywhere in the process. It's just one smooth way of pressing it down and going up again. So, um, so the, the, also the, the force that you need to press it will be a linear, it yes. will not be a curve basically, no. but just no. completely yes. linear. Yeah. Um, also, red switches tend to be a little bit lighter to press, I think. Depends a little bit on what you use. Yeah. For, yeah. for gaming, like in my, I have a bag that I take to LAN parties, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got a keyboard in that by default, and there I have an MX Black keyboard. Yeah. And that's like the, it's basically the, the switch itself is, uh, apart from the color and the spring, is identical to, to Cherry MX Red. Yeah. Um, but the difference is that the, the spring, it's a, it's a heavier spring. Mm -hmm. So for if you have, for example, Cherry MX Red, it's a 45 uh, gram force for actuation. Cherry MX Black is 60 grams yeah. force for actuation. Yeah. So, so the reds, I remember, can be heavy. Yeah, the reds, I remember, were uh, kind of designed as a gaming switch, quote unquote, um, because the idea was here that, you know, a linear actuation and, and quite light to press, because you need, you know, it's for the speed. They had the speed in mind. After that, I think we also had saw like uh, speed silver and stuff like that. So there are actually switches with uh, even more specialized. But I remember when it was first introduced, I think the red switch was meant to be like the, yeah, the, like the, the go-to gaming switch. Because I believe switch. MX Black is existing longer. Yeah. Um, so it's like a, a lighter alternative um, to make it more suitable for gaming, for example. Yeah. Because this is not only these kind of switches, <clears throat> it's, it's not only used in keyboards, for example, no. but also in um, heavy machinery and stuff like that. Yeah. You will sometimes have buttons on there. Yeah. And in certain occasions, they have mechanical switches, like the MX switches, for example, yeah. underneath. Yeah. Um, so there they've been using those switches for quite a while already. Yeah. Um, and they've started to use them more and more in, in mechanical keyboards as well. Yeah. Yeah. And also important is the linear red ones. So like I already said, they don't have the clicky sound. So they are, I don't want to say they're silent, uh, because I don't think they qualify as being silent, uh, but at least you don't get the click noise uh, from them. So like they the are... switch itself doesn't make any sound. So in no. that sense, it's silent. Yeah. But like, especially if you type like me, you will yes. smack down your keycap on, the... on the top plate of your keyboard. Yeah. And, and that that's will what you give hear. the sound. Yeah. That's the, the, you have the click and the clock sound basically. The click it comes from a switch yeah. and the clock is your keycap landing on your, on your yeah. top plate. Yeah. Um, so then the middle one, the tactile brown, uh, the name already says it as well, tactile. <clears throat> so this switch uh, has the, the tactile bump, which means that you can feel at some point when you're pressing down that there's a point where you, it, you know, it, it clicks kind of. You can feel a click even if you can't hear it. It's, not a, it's, it's more of a bump than a click. Yeah, well, you know, find a way to describe it. But indeed, it's like you feel like yeah. a hurdle and at some point it, it just goes a bit like, you know, you feel But also it's not, as, it's not as sharp as no. uh, blue, for example, because there it really is a click. But here it's like you feel you have to press it over yeah, uh, and, yeah a over bump, a certain basically. point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, some people really like that. Uh, so it's, it's a, only a tactile uh, bump. And, and so, um, yeah, you can also see it in the image, basically, as it moves down. Um, basically, what happens is that the shape in the key, uh, in, in the switch itself, uh, you know, goes over another shape that's a spring that's pretty much like, you know, pushing up against it. And at some point, it has to, like, yeah, cross a, a boundary, which requires it a little bit more force. And once it's past that, it's kind of, yeah, it goes down easier. Um, so that's the tactile brown one. And then there's, I think, a, a switch that has become quite iconic, or at least, you know, a lot of people will recognize it, even if they don't like it. You uh, love it or you hate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's the loud switch. It's the, the, clicky, the switch. clicky switch, you know. Um, and yeah, this one has, uh, in, in this case, in the regular one, uh, what you can see also, it, it consists basically out of two parts. Uh, one of it, the, the blue one, the stem, is, is the main uh, part pressing down. And then there's like a, a what did you call it? A click the jacket. Click jacket, it's yeah, called. There you go. Yeah. So it, it's a click jacket, which is literally, I think it's called jacket, of course, because it's like, uh, yeah. Around it's, the it's stem, draped around the stem, indeed. And once you uh, push the jacket past a certain point um, <clears throat> of the, the click or of the, act well, I'm not sure if that's the actuation point, but probably, uh, then the jacket kind of continues to fall down pretty much. Um, as you can see in the, in, in the moving uh, animation there. 
Um, and yeah, th that's uh, a part of what creates noise. <clears throat> so you have both a, a tactile, so you can feel the actuation point or the point where the click happens, and you can also hear it. Um, uh, yeah, and I think for that, I mean, there is a difference between this and one of the switches coming up. That's what I was thinking about. Uh, as you can see, the, the actuation or the click only happens one way, so only when you press it down. But when you release the button, there's no click. It just resets pretty much, and but there's no click. Um, Caesar is saying people don't like blue because they're loud. Yeah. I love them because they're loud, but um, my computer is in the living room and my girlfriend banned me from using a clicky keyboard. So now, unfortunately, I cannot use a clicky keyboard Aww. on my computer anymore. So that's so, why I took it to the office. Exactly. So I decided to use it here at work <laughs> to, to bother all my colleagues. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the thing is indeed, it's like a, a hate it or love it thing. And that's why I'm also saying, you know, yes, we're going to take you through some of the details later on as well and the numbers, but it really comes down to your personal preference and what you feel more, most comfortable with or, or what you feel is most satisfying to type on. Um, and, and that's just something you have to experience. You can't really d decide that um, from a spec sheet or from an overview you it, it really the best advice i can give you is just go out try something and then see what you like um yeah uh oh wait oh i've, I've disconnected my only keyboard didn't i here we go <laughs> um so <clears throat> just a close-up at the blue switch in a bit higher quality uh, with the click jacket as you can see the the, the click happens uh, when it's activated and in the downwards movement so here you can really see above me uh, at the point where the click happens, the click jacket falls down. There you go. And that creates a, a, a click sound. And when it resets, there's no click. It just resets back to its original position. So that's it. I think yeah. we already, uh, yeah, we don't have to go into too much detail about that. Um, then I want to talk about the kill box white. And I think, um, Mike, we have a nice uh, movie or animation that, sh that yeah, <laughs> this is a uh, screenshot of. But let's, let's first take a look at the video. Yeah, let's watch the animation. I hope the sound is not too loud because we're going to be talking over it a little bit. It should be quite okay. I think yeah. I will be able to understand. So this is courtesy of the uh, of, of Kale. <clears throat> so there's the glorious box switch. Um, as you can see, now here comes the exploded view, and here is really uh, one of the points that sets it apart from, for example, the blue switch. So the mechanism is a lot different from what you will find in uh, the regular mechanical switch that you're yeah. used to, probably. Yeah. And this is more, really one of the main things that you saw just there, um, the click bar. And yeah, the... and here you can also see it. It's a click bar on a, on a spring, basically, yeah. and that's what really gives that a really satisfying click on the box yes. switches. Uh, these also come in multiple colors, so that just uh, well, here you see uh, there are some different configurations. We are using the uh, box white. Which and the travel and the one. activation point are also a yeah. little bit like the total travel distance is a little bit shorter than. Yeah. Um, regular cool. switches and yeah. also the actuation uh, point is also a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, but later on, see, we'll show you more about this. Yeah, exactly. As you can see here, this is really where, where it comes down to. So uh, you remember the, the blue switch had the click jacket, which you know falls down. Um, this switch actually doesn't have a, a click jacket or anything that falls down. So what it has, what creates the click instead of the, the jacket falling down is, uh, well, a, what is called a click bar. So it's literally this thing right there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, I don't know if it's a, it's part of a spring, uh, but it's a metal bar pretty much, uh, which at the end is basically the spring. Yeah. So the round thing you see there yeah. at the end of the click bar. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at it. It's, it's yeah. not really rendered as a spring, but I, I it guess it It doesn't look could like be. the regular spring you see basically yeah. behind it underneath yeah. this switch. No, exactly. Um, but it functions as a spring. Yeah. yeah. And then the shape above it, as you can see, that's kind of similar to <clears throat> what we saw on the other, uh, um, stem as well i guess or the, the shape kind of so it it has to push it per, uh, past a certain point and once it does then it it kind of you know it it moves out of the way and then it snaps back uh, and that's what what creates the click sound but it does it both ways which means that it does it when you're pressing down uh, but when the, when you reset it or release the button and it comes back up it does it again so you actually have two points at which you get the click 
So you get double the noise. <laughs> twice <laughs> the clicks, basically. Yeah, twice the But what the I clicks. really like about this type of mechanism is um, when, because before I used to type on uh, MX green switches for a long time, and that's basically the, the heavier equivalent of uh, MX blue. So yeah. it is the same type of mechanism with the click jacket, it's just a heavier spring, but the rest is identical, uh, and the color, of course. Yeah. Um, but the downside for me for that type of switch is that I can perfectly feel when I activate the switch, but I don't feel when I deactivate it. So, I, so I'm, I'm not perfectly aware of yeah. at what point I have to you be to activate it again. Yeah, you st when you stop pressing it or exactly, yeah, exactly. when you release it. And that's, wh that's what I really like about the box wide switches. I've been using box wide for quite a while now, yeah. um, but it's got a very clear point when you activate it and when you deactivate it. You can very clearly feel it. Um, you can even hear it. And hear it as well. <laughs> Another thing, a difference between uh, kill box white and regular blue or green or regular click, clicky switches um, is that the activation and the deactivation point is at the same point in the switch. Um, for for example, uh, a regular blue switch, the activation point is um, I believe it's on two millimeters, um, I, I think but we... you have to release it further than that point yeah. back upwards to deactivate it. I think we have a slide for that right here we go. So here's an overview uh, mm -hmm. comparing, uh, well, the, the main switch that we have, but I think we can focus mo more on the blue and the box white uh, in this case, because the reds, uh, well, they're not available yet. I'm not sure when they will be. Um, so both blue and box white are clicky. Uh, the blue ones use the click jacket, as you've seen, and the white ones have the click bar. Uh, and here we go. So the click moments uh, on the blue one, it's only on actuation. So that's like downwards. Um, on the box white, it's both actuation and when you release it. So also when the switch comes back up again, or the, the keycap, yeah. then you'll also hear a click. The actuation force, so the actual force uh, needed or required to press down, uh, blue 60 grams, uh, box white 50 grams. So This differs a little bit what type of blue switch you have. I believe the yeah. Jerry one is 55 grams or something. Can yeah. be slight differences from manufacturer to manufacturer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but the ones that we are using yes. uh, for the GK50 Elite, which you can also get with a blue switch, that one indeed is a 60 gram actuation yeah. for. Uh, then also here comes the number, so uh, the actuation point, so the point at which it actually uh, uh, registers that, okay, you, you've clicked it, so now I have to actually like, you know, do the, the, the action or, or you know you've typed an A or an S or you know, just that it does the movement or registers the key press. Uh, for the blues it's two millimeters and for the kill box white it is 1.8 so it's a little bit shorter. Um, it might not seem like much, some people might notice it, other people might not. So this is also a point of, of really of debate and something that I think you you know you have to try in order to know. Um, and travel distance also is a little bit short, and this is like total travel distance. Uh, so this is like, uh, because the actuation point is usually not when you fully bottom out your keycap. Um, it happens- It's halfway, basically. About halfway, yeah. indeed. Um, so even when it's actuated, you can still press the key down further. Um, that doesn't mean that it's going to register even more. Um, I, I know a lot of people tend to, it's like with, with a controller, right? If you <laughs> press a button harder, it's going to go faster. Like if yeah. you're steering with it, it's going yeah. to go faster or whatever, if, if it's a throttle. Um, no, there really, I think optical switches work that way, right? Not, the, the, not specifically optical, but analog no. switches. Oh, there, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the thing I was thinking about, yeah. So, because the, the, they can actually measure how far, it's like a percentage scale. Yeah. So, it's like how far you're pressing it down. Um, in this case, it's simply Digital, it's kind of so like it's on or off. Yeah, it's I or O. It's it's yeah. like yeah, on or off. That's it. Yes or no. Um, and the rated lifespan uh, is also a, a bit of a difference. Uh, the Kale Blue switches have 50 million keystrokes, which is already quite a lot. Um, I, 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 get, I don't have a counter. It would be nice. Maybe maybe that's one of our next features that we should have, like in our keyboard, that it should like register how many. <laughs> Key presses. Yeah, key press or actuations you've actually done. But it's per key, uh, per switch actually, 50 million. So not for the whole keyboard, it's per switch. Uh, so per individual switch, per individual key, 50 million. So yeah, if you're like a furious escape typing, you know, p person who, who keeps pressing escape or whatever key, um, yeah, 50 million is a lot. Um, 
for the kill box. Uh, it's 80 million. I think it's also down to the uh, design of the switch itself. It's a bit more resilient, a bit more resistant to um, dust and moisture, thanks to the box around it, of course, and the IP56 uh, rating. Um, but also the mechanism inside is a bit different. I, I guess a little bit uh, less susceptible to wear and tear. Um, so it will last a bit longer, simply put. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for uh, this part. Maybe uh, let's do another giveaway. Good idea. Yeah. Then I'm going to connect uh, one of the, well, both keyboards actually. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Uh, if you're on YouTube and Twitch, uh, once every six minutes, our bot will also put uh, a direct link to Gleam in the chat. Um, and our next winner for uh, a $20 US dollar Steam wallet code is Mark5. Congratulations. Um, keep an eye out on your mailbox because it will be emailed to you in the coming days. If you haven't, yes. I haven't participated yet, please do so. If you already did, you will be automatically included in the next drawings as well. Um, so no need to do it again, at least not for this week. Of course, next week um, you need to enroll again to participate. Yes. Um, all right, so what do you think we, we try in some ASMR with the key switches? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to see if we can quiet down. So this is the, uh, this is the, the blue one. So the regular blue one. I'm just going to see if I can keep this one close. And here we go. And try another one as well, another key cap. So the click, the sharp sound is only when you press it down you yes. can hear it. So here it's pressing down. And now I'm letting it up again. You hear something, but it's more like the resetting of the, uh, the, the key click cap, jacket, I guess, basically, yeah. indeed. But it's not actually clicking then. No, it's a deeper sound. So the sharp sound, that's the actual click. And then it goes up again. So, and I'll try and see if I can let you guys hear what it sounds like if you're actually typing on it. <laughs> can you guys hear it properly? Yeah. Um So as you can see, there is like, when I try to press the key, I'll try and press the key now without bottoming it out. So you can only hear the click. And here's the difference when I do bottom it out. So you can clearly hear the, the, the thud at the end pretty much. <laughs> so there's, a, the, the, I mean, the sharp sound, really the sharp sound is, is the, the actual click of the click jacket. Uh, but like I said, when you're typing, you tend to hear both the click, but also the bottoming out, which is a bit of a deeper sound. So that's the difference between, you know, the sharp click like this. But usually when you're actually typing, you tend to bottom out the keycap, so you'll hear more like this. So yeah, um, all right, then let's move to the white one. Uh, after this, by the way, I'll also do like a more direct comparison so you can- I'll, I'll Switch just, back and forth. Exactly, a switch times. back and forth a bit. But yeah. now first, uh, individually, uh, here is the same escape keycap from the uh, box white. So as you can hear, there's both a downward, I'm pressing it down now, and an upward, so letting it go. Click. And 
Um, when I'm actually typing, I'll see if I can simulate that for you. So basically you're now hearing also twice as many clicks because yeah. you get the uh, actuation and the release of yeah. every key, keystroke. And like I did with the blue one, uh, I'm also going to try and do only the actuation without bottoming the switch out. Um, it, this is actually quite hard, by the way, because you, you tend to you know, want to press it all the way down. And, and like I said, it's millimeter work in between. Uh, th there's only millimeters of difference between the actuation and actually bottoming it out. So, but I'm going to see if I can try that. So these are actually only the, uh, the actuations and the clicks. And now I'm going to bottom it out as well. So yeah, I hope you guys could hear the difference there as well. Can you grab the separate box switch and keep it really close to your microphone and activate and deactivate? Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's not connected to any keyboard, so no, I'll... No, but it's just so you can hear the click. Yeah, I'll see if I can do that. I don't know if I can keep it even closer. Oops, I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, that was just me doing this. Pressing it down, which is one click, and then letting it go. And you can even, if you watch my fingers, I'm tr I'll try and see if I can really show you the point at which it activates. So that, there's a click there. But also, if I let it back up again, there's also a point where you really see my finger like shooting up again. So there's like, yeah. Both ways, there's both uh, downwards and upwards, there's a click. And this click, I think, is, a, is such a satisfying click <laughs> of the box switches. I personally really like the, the, yeah. the click bar compared to a click jacket. Sounds like a tiny light switch. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, light switches are a bit heavier and a bit bigger. This is really small, and I think that's one of the yeah, reasons why it, it provides a really um, crisp click as and well. And this is really hard to explain on a live stream, so yeah. if you have, uh, a chance to try this out. Yes. Um, make sure to take that chance so you can experience the difference between yep. uh, a click jacket switch, so like the, like the blue switch, for example, or a click bar switch, yep. like box white. Because it also feels quite a bit different when you type on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, some of you might have also seen like a light show going on here, um, as you can see. Um, these keyboards actually have like a, a, a dual layer of effects that they can do. A dual layer means basically you have one effect going on, but then if you press a key, it's going to do another effect um, simultaneously or, or yeah, over it pretty much. It's like two layers. So as you can see, there's like a ripple effect when I press a key. And in the background, there's like a crazy RGB uh, spinning thing going as well. Um, and really... Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you the um, the RGB control without any software. So you just press the dragon key here, and then if you uh, if you press this key, uh, the it's the insert. It'll just cycle through the effects. So uh, here's like a rainbow effect. Here's I think like a I don't know I think it's called radar or something. It's like a wave moving through. I'm trying to look in the camera, but with this much light, it's hard to see what it's actually doing. Oh, here, this, this is more like a radar, I guess. RGB, wheel, different. I'm not sure. I don't actually know the exact differences between them, um, but there's always, there's always just you can turn it off um, or a solid color or just lighting up a, a certain amount of keys, as you can see here. Uh, these are just, you know, certain keys. So it's like if you have a certain game where you only use uh, specific keys. I think this is like a preset for MOBAs, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know which game, but it's like, yeah, MOBAs or uh, FPS game or something like that. 
I'm just trying to figure out, so is this, is it going to be solid color like this? I'm not sure. Because I want to show uh, you can quickly just cycle through the colors as well. So if you like white or blue or pink or whatever you feel like, you can just quickly uh, use the arrow keys to cycle through the single colors uh, and then brightness as well by up and down. So this is down. I think there's like one, two, three, four, five, five levels of brightness, I believe. And also some really uh, one really cool detail. I'll see if the cable is long enough to show you guys this, but um, I don't know if you guys ever looked at the like the indicator lights here, but in this keyboard, and especially I have to find the right effect, just uh, or well not the right effect, but the, where you can see it best. Um, just give me a second here. Um, I need, I think the it's the RGB uh, wave pretty much. Uh, yeah, I think this is okay, and then I can speed it up a bit. That's too fast. All right. Um, look at the indicator lights. They will actually change the color. Maybe I can just put all the other things that normally I leave off as well. Um, not sure if I can do this. Anyway, um, oh, maybe I think it works like this. Yeah. So here, all three of them are on. And as you can see, they will change color with the rest of the keyboard, with the effect that you're displaying. So a lot of keyboards, they, they will have like full RGB and per key RGB, just like this one. Uh, but the indicator lights will have like one color. They'll be red or blue or whatever color, and they'll just stay that color uh, always. So regardless of what the rest of your keyboard is doing, they will just always retain their color. Uh, with this keyboard, we it's just like a small finishing touch, but we made sure that these actually can change color with the rest, so they'll stay in sync with it. Uh, give us green, please. Uh, green is passing by every now and again. I think it was just there where you can <laughs> see, you know, it becomes black because it's being chromaed out by the the green screen settings. Yeah. What I also really like is, for example, when um, even when you have. Uh, a certain color on if you switch it completely off um, the the lights will still work for for the num lock for example so if you switch off the lighting it will yeah. automatically so oh. if, you, if you have num lock on well yeah well actually i think indeed but then they yep. will just switch to one color and yeah. stay that way so yeah. like this it's now it's red but even if you switch off your rgb lighting yes. these lights will still work yeah, so here you can see it's it's one color. Actually, it switches because when you, uh, let me just show you guys this. Uh, when I switch the brightness on again and it displays the effect, it will switch to uh, changing the color, as mm -hmm. you can see. Uh, but if you then turn the brightness down uh, all the way to the point where, here it is, uh, where the, the RGB is off on all the keycaps or on all the keys, um, the indicator lights here will just switch to solid red color and stay that way. So it's, it's not going to interfere. It's not going to you know do a little RGB dance for you. It's actually going to calm down one color. So it's just clear if the uh, you know your your scroll lock or caps lock or anything is uh, or num lock is 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 fixed or not. Um, and it's just doing its job without trying to uh, dazzle you. So indeed, uh, you know a lot of thought goes into this and it's it's a nice some nice touches um that really goes to show you know the, the effort and uh, uh thought that goes into a product like this um yeah i think one of the other things i wanted to show you guys and we had a question about it before the wrist rest so the uh, wro1 and we called it uh vigor or yeah vigor because of course it's an accessory to the keyboard so that's why it gets that name as well but instead of gk which is gaming keyboard yes it's indeed. wr wrist yeah. rest so there's a logic there uh, although this one is kind of like an exception because we also well we don't have uh, m multiple wrist rests we just have one um, i've got it right here as well out of the box so as you can see there's a very subtle like dragon shape of course in here but it, yeah it's not like too much in your face uh, some nice stitching in a different color. The backside is uh, rubberized.
padding uh, and it's it's got a pattern which uh, really on if you have a slippery or a very polished desk or something this will really grab onto it pretty much and uh, stay in place um, and there's even I don't know if you guys can see this but it it breathes a bit oh here you go yeah there's some holes in ventilation there holes. as well indeed so if it you know obviously if, if you've got a sweaty day or something or, or you're just a sweaty person it happens um, yeah there will you will have some um, some moisture getting in um, this material um, this material is I don't know this by heart uh, yeah it's it's cooling gel um, which is pretty much it's like a memory foam so it's it's um, yeah it will retain the shape a little bit as you can see if you press it in really hard but that just means that once you rest your hands in it and you don't want to, you don't move it too much it will kind of take the shape of your uh, wrists you know resting on there so it will just form uh, to your hands pretty much um, it's also uh, good to know that this is actually uh, I think it has an antibacterial coating as well so it's not gonna uh, you know there, there's no stuff going to grow on here uh, at any time soon or it shouldn't at least so it's a little bit extra that we made sure that it has antibacterial coating. Um, and it feels nice, that's why you know, it's, it's called cooling gel, it, because it's not just uh, memory foam, but it does actually feel quite nice and, and cool. It's not like actually cold, but it does feel like a little bit, yeah, it's like a gel. So it, it does have some cooling properties. And I mean, this is also like a, a, a personal preference, a love it or hate it thing. If you're using a low profile keyboard, I wouldn't recommend this um, because obviously this will uh, make the height at which you uh, put your wrists, it, it will up the height. So you will actually have to kind of like dip down with your fingers to uh, do the typing. But with uh, a, high, a bit of a high profile keyboard like the GK50 Elite here, uh, it's actually quite comfortable for me. Uh, so I've been using it like this as well. And I mean, I can use it without, that's fine. Uh, but using this actually gives my wrist just a little bit of that, you know, cushioning and it's not too high. So it doesn't, um, yeah, it doesn't put me in a position where I feel like, you know, it's an unnatural um, position to be in. It's quite ergonomic like this. So, and uh, you know, especially for the GK50 Elite, but also the other, uh, or other full-size keyboards or, you know, the, the higher, the, the non-low profile, let's say. So GK30, um, GK80, GK70. Uh, for those ones, it is quite uh, a nice fit. Um, and obviously, this uh, wrist rest is uh, sized to fit with a full-size keyboard. So for your TKL, if you have a, a GK70, for example, TKL, it's going to be a bit more extended compared to, uh, to your keyboard. So it's, it's a nice fit, especially for a, a full-size keyboard with a numpad. And yeah, it's a small detail, but it's nice. Don't stab your keyboard. No, don't do that. <laughs> Is there also a mouse wrist rest? No, there's not, uh, actually. Would you like one? And if so... Would you like to have a separate one or like yeah. include it in a mouse pad, maybe? Yeah. As a part of a mouse pad, basically. Is it sweat proof? Oh yeah, it is. Uh, uh, again, it, it has this uh, it has these breathing holes in the bottom. So if, if sweat does get into it, um, it, it can also escape, so it can, it can get out. Um, and it's also got the antibacterial coating. So um, yeah, that should make it pretty much sweat proof. Uh, earlier on, I saw a question about the GK50 Elite, why it, uh, it doesn't come with a wrist rest uh, by default. I think it's because it's very personal whether or not yeah. you'd like to use a wrist rest. Yeah. Uh, I, for example, prefer to use my keyboard without one. Um, and including one by default would make the keyboard more expensive and many yeah. people would yes. throw it to the side anyway which would be a pity especially um, yeah so now it don't, you only you can buy it separately if if you prefer to have one yes um but it's no waste of money if you prefer um, not to have one exactly. so that's why it's sold separately and not included in yeah. a box with the gk50 elite for example yeah because the, uh, the GK50 Elite with the box white switches um, are uh, should be available at least, depending on the country and your reseller, obviously. Uh, they decide the price, but um, I think that the, the price point we're trying to go for is uh, around 70, 75 euros, dollars around that price point. So for a mechanical uh, keyboard with box switches, that's quite a nice price. 
Um, and indeed, you know, we, we decided to go for uh, kind of making it still as affordable as possible without sacrificing on, on the keyboard quality, on the, the, the basics, the fundamentals. Um, but yeah, not including one of these can make, I don't know, like, I actually don't know, maybe $10 of difference even, easily. So, yeah. Uh, so if you're not going to use it, then it will be a waste. Exactly, and um, if you still want it, Paul you can asking, get it separately. Paul is asking, does it connect in any way to the keyboard? No, no. it doesn't. No. It's, um, no, it's very separate. Uh, so there's no way yeah. that it connects to it, actually. Yeah, you can For me, that's actually a plus, because I think if you would put it all the way to the keyboard, Maybe we can show that up close. Um, yeah. That's usually not where your wrists are. I, I've shown this before, because I, I remember on, uh, which one was it? I think GK80, we also had a uh, detachable, or no, a detached, actually, uh, wrist rest. But then rest. it has to be quite long. Yeah. It has to be... Because if, yeah. if you put it, like, right up to the keyboard, I, I, it depends on the size of your hands. If you have yeah. small hands, that might be fine. But for me, look what happens when I put my wrist here. If I want to reach the bottom row of keys, I have I really have to like do this, which is very unnatural and uncomfortable. So that's why for me, putting it away slightly at a distance puts me in that sweet spot where I'm I'm in the middle of the keyboard, just uh, in a relaxed uh, posture. So I can very easily reach down for these keys, just you know if I need to press them, and I can still also reach up to any of the top row of keys if I if I have to. So it it really you know it it's all hands are different in, in terms of size. So um, that's why it, it'll be different for you. Maybe you, if you have very small hands, you'll probably like it closer to the keyboard because that puts you in that sweet spot of being right in the middle of the keyboard and then being able to reach up or down very easily. Um, and people with very large hands or long fingers, for example, will probably prefer having it a bit further away from the keyboard. So then, you know, it, you know your fingers can reach all the way where they need to be uh, without having to stretch too far or you know really claw up close to be able to reach the space bar for example Kniam is saying a mouse pad where lucky holds your wrist will guarantee me using a mouse pad again <laughs> <laughs> well yeah maybe like he, uh, you want you want one where lucky like hugs your wrist like he goes like eh. do you have a lucky you... near you uh, I don't know. <laughs> let's see what it looks like uh, oh, yeah, here he is. So you want one where, where Lucky is, I, I don't know how you want to do that, because it's like, you know. Maybe this Lucky is a bit maybe, too big. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe Lucky has to be flat or something, but I, I don't know how you would do that, kind of like putting, you know, just he's like holding it, or <laughs> I, I, I really don't, you want it, or you want him, you know, that he's like biting you, like your hand is in his mouth, or it's, I don't know, I don't get it. <laughs> So now we've been talking a lot about um, theory. Yes. But we might just need to put these products into practice. Also, yeah. But maybe we also can look at Dragon Center real quickly because that's the software where you can actually, uh, you know, do more things with these products. Um, so if we go to the capture real quick, I'll just try and fly through this. This is our Dragon Center software, uh, which lets you, uh, well, get the most out of your MSI products, basically. Uh, and now it's one platform for all your MSI products. Uh, in the past, we've had a lot of different uh, products. Mystic Light used to be a separate software gaming app. We've, we've had a lot of different things, land manager on motherboards. Now it's all condensed into one package. Um, so in here, you'll find uh, all your products. When you go into the homepage, basically, it's where you start out. Um, and you go, you'll see there's uh, like a user scenario. So you, here's where you can, for example, do uh, performance profiles. Um, if you've got an MSI monitor connected, you, oh sorry, this is monitoring your hardware actually, uh, but you've got, uh, for example, a true color, which um, does certain presets, or you can customize how your monitor uh, looks, the, the, uh, the color and stuff like that. Land manager is included. Uh, Mystic Light as well. We'll start out with Mystic Light. Uh, here you can see a couple of icons basically uh, signifying certain products. So this is the actual case. I'm using a Trident X. Uh, for this, uh, yeah, for this stream, to display it, you can link them all together by using uh, the button here. That's like a link. You can sync them all together, and then it will show it's syncing everything that's connected. Uh, disconnecting it is also quite easy. Uh, so you can either do it separately. This is the mouse. 
uh, like I said, GK, uh, oh, sorry, GM08. Uh, and here you can see uh, it can still be linked up with all the products, so it will try its best to do everything it can do. But the effects, uh, you can uh, either turn it off or have a breathing effect. And for this mouse, you can't really uh, adjust the, the color, for example. So it's a, it's a single color uh, thing, uh, it's a single color light. Uh, again, you know, it's, it's an entry level, so uh, it, it's focusing more on the essentials and a little bit less on um, yeah, things like RGB, for example. So there is LED in there uh, for some indication, uh, but it doesn't stretch that far. For the keyboard, it's a different story. Because so, here, uh, for the Vigor GK50 Elite, you can, uh, yeah, you can pretty much do all the effects you want. So it can be reactive, which means it's, uh, it will react to key presses. Uh, it can, uh, you can have the ripple effect, as you can see, um, and you can make it diffuse or converge. So, you know, either um, go away from the key you're pressing or converge to that location. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do here uh, and also customize effects, of course, or profiles like this. Uh, so you can very easily uh, select which keys. So, for example, if you have a, like a gaming profile you want to activate or you want to customize, that's what you can do uh, with the custom uh, key setup. Um, so, yeah, um, that's really nice. And on top, you also see the ambient link uh, button and that yes. one, um, you can link it up with uh, certain games. Yes. And then the lighting of your system. So, for example, your keyboard, but also if you use any other yeah. uh, Mystic Light supported uh, RGB components, yeah. they will all uh, sync up with your game and also yeah. react to certain actions in the game. For example, if you're being attacked, it will blink red. If you look into the sky, it will turn blue, yeah. stuff like that. Um, yeah. Here you see a couple of supported games. Yeah. Um, if you want to see more about this, check out. Um, uh, our earlier RGB uh, live stream, RGB All the Things, it's called. Yes. Uh, you will also find it uh, on YouTube in our MSI Insider playlist. Yeah. Um, and this will also work with external devices, like for example, uh, U lighting. Yeah. Also so here's indeed, if you go, there's a couple of things here. So there's an ambient mode here. You can yeah. choose the effects, but ambient link shows you indeed. There's, uh, for example, Nano Leaf. Very popular, it's the wall-mounted uh, triangles, or I think they've even got different shapes now. Uh, but they started out with the triangles, really cool. Uh, but also, indeed, uh, Philips Hue lights, uh, which are quite popular. And, you know, it's pretty much, you can put that into any, uh, or replace any light bulb pretty much with a Hue light. So that means that pretty much your house lighting can be uh, included or can, can react to what you're doing in the game or uh, sync up with your build. So you can, it, it really takes the uh, RGB experience, if that's your thing, and if, if you really like that, you can really take that outside uh, of your just your PC or your monitor or your peripherals. You can pretty much include your whole house. I'm waiting for the video. You know those videos in, in the US, in America, where they, they make like this Christmas light oh, show? Oh, I love those. I'm waiting for that, but, but with Mystic Light, you know? I uh, currently live in an apartment, but maybe if yeah. in the future I live in a bigger house i would like to light my I, house like that I, I think you can do it actually you <laughs> should be able to as long as your wi-fi range is good that uh, you know <laughs> and uh, ambient link house yes <laughs> yes yeah, ambi yeah. <laughs> so your house will respond to the game it sounds yeah. good yeah. Should, technically it is doable exactly uh, and uh, just the last thing I want to highlight in this software as well is you have the uh, gaming gear link here, which specifically gives you the options per product. So here you can see mouse, for example. Uh, this is the uh, GM08, as you all uh, know. Here, uh, there are some limited options. In this case, uh, higher end mice will have more like lift off distance, pollen rate, um, and then different uh, effects, maybe even um, re-mapping uh, the keys of your mouse so you can actually assign different functions to keys. Um, in this case, it's just uh, DPI scaling. So you can uh, set the levels, select the level, but also uh, set it. So in this case, it's level one is whoop, it's 200, as you can see. So now I really have to move the mouse a lot um, if I want to, uh, yeah, here we go. I really have to move the mouse a lot to move just a little bit on the screen. But if I then uh, change it to level two, it's already quite a bit yeah, easier. Uh, level three, it becomes quite fast already, uh, all the way up to level five, which is 3200, as you can see on the screen. Um, I, I only have to like flick my wrist and I'm like, if I had multiple monitors, I would be like on the third monitor along. Um, but as you can see, I can still put the slider all the way up to the max, which is 4200. Uh, oh, that's the max that the sensor can do. 
And I mean, yeah, you can see this is just, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe Eric is somebody who, who, who uses high uh, sensitive or high uh, DPI settings, right? He, that, uh, that, yeah, and a high sensitivity. That's why he cannot aim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to say that. Uh, he, he can aim, but it's, it's getting used to, I guess. But, uh, you know, I'm really wondering if this is, for example, if he would prefer a, a setting even higher than this. But I can't, I mean, you hardly have to move your hand to, to go from one side of the screen these to another. These are very small movements you're making now. Yeah, I mean, and it this goes is all like the literally the from going from one side of the screen to the other. It's 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 this. It's like literally. Yeah, it's a very small movement. So I mean, there's 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 has to be something there uh, for you. So the presets are, for example, I think it's 400, 800, 1600, no, uh, etc. 200 actually. 200, yeah. 400. Ah. Uh, 800. Oh. But you can adjust these steps. So yes. if you like, for yeah. example, like me, if you like to have lower sensitivity, you can, for example, do 200, 400, 600, 800, 1000 yes. yeah. um, as yeah. your presets. So you yeah. can also adjust these, these settings. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a very basic settings for this mouse. For the keyboard, um, you've got some more settings, obviously. Um, as you can see, very easily you can uh, uh, adjust the uh, keyboard layout so that the, the, what will happen uh, if you uh, press the keys, for example. So you've got some presets here. Um, it also shows you the firmware version, by the way, can be useful, but usually it, you shouldn't be bothered about that. Uh, but as you can see here, you can very easily create some, um, yeah, s some recordings for, for macros, for example. Uh, that's one, one really easy thing you can do in here. One, I think also one of the most useful things if you are uh, someone who uses a lot of macros uh, either in games or in programs or whatever you're, you're doing. And in that situation for example uh, a numpad can also be useful. Yes. So you don't need any dedicated yeah. macro keys but no. you can just use for example the the numbers on your numpad because yeah. generally in games you're not using your numpad really. Yeah yeah and there's like you can even do a built-in delay and you know save different ones uh, import or export um, macros that you've done you've recorded before so yeah, there's there's a lot that you can do here as well. With so the, if you keyboard. reinstall your system, you don't have to do them all <laughs> over again. Yeah, you can just save them and load them again. Yeah. Um, right. So that's pretty much it for uh, for Dragon Center. So indeed, Mike was saying uh, we need to put uh, this into practice. Let's um, do some angry typing. Yeah. So <laughs> you've you also got a uh, GK50 Elite, right? Yes. I, I believe you have uh, the box white, correct? Yep. So I have the very early sample. I've been having this for like half a year, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's not worn down to the nub quite yet. Um, for for comparison's sake, what I will do is okay. But this since, is the since you introduced me to it, I never gave it back to you. I know. Yeah, and, and I, I, I don't I'm think there's a I chance. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll I'll have it back because you know it's yeah. If if you like it, you stick with it. I wouldn't count on it on getting it back. Thank you. <laughs> so what I will do for comparison's sake is I will be using uh, the the blue one. Um, and I don't know, I mean, you know, we have, we have similar mics. We have both, we have the same lav mic that we're using. Yep. Uh, probably we are uh, the uh, same distance away from it. So there's going to be a lot of click sounds is what I'm trying to say, guys. Uh, before we start this, do you want to do another giveaway? That's a good idea. Maybe. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Uh, the bot will also put it into Twitch and YouTube chat a direct link to gleam every six minutes and our next winner for a 20 us dollar steam wallet code well, let's hope you can pronounce it is Ooh. Uh, this one i can do francis c546 congratulations you, you also won a 20 us dollar steam wallet code uh, which will be emailed to you in the coming days uh, so keep an eye on your mailbox yes all right, so uh, let's see if we can make this work. We were testing this earlier. There's, there's a game, uh, it's called Typing of the Dead. Um, it, it's uh, like a, a, an action game where normally you would have, you know, you, you point your mouse and you click to kill stuff. It's in like this case, zombies. Killing zombies and stuff. Yeah. By um, typing. Yeah, and I hope the sound is not too loud, by the way. So see if we can keep an eye on that. Uh, but, yeah, here comes the music. Um, yeah, what let you us do know if it's too loud. You have to type to, to kill uh, monsters in this case. So 
Let's see if we can do that. Uh, multiplayer. I see Francis C is in chat. Congratulations with your code. Yes. <laughs> Damn, let's go. <laughs> All right, looks like it's gonna work, perhaps. So let's see. Uh, because it, it did work at some point, and then uh, we, we tried to test it again, and it didn't quite work. So let's see if we can make it work. Music level is okay. Uh, that's good to hear. Nice. Okay. So at some point, I hope I should be I seeing... I think I should join directly because I accepted your invite on Steam. Yeah. Here we go. Joining game. Ready to kill some zombies? Yes. So let's do the story mode. So I should click that as well, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, go to, uh, I guess, agent and then continue. Should I just click continue now? Yes, yeah. All right, and then you can ready up, I guess. Ah, right? nice. Yes, all right. Yeah, it's not the, it's not the most clear of interfaces, um, but yeah. It's not the, n the newest game either. No. It's from 2013. 2013, yeah. Yeah. Type for your life. Yeah, that's literally what that's you're doing. That's literally what you do in this game, indeed. Uh, let's see if we can skip this. Oh yeah, by the way, again, I think we said this at, at the start. Yeah, everyone who is not over 18, there is some some rough language in here, so... Close your ears. Yes, close <laughs> your ears. <laughs> nice. And don't read any subtitles or stuff like that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, let's see if we can make this work. The loading is taking quite a long oh, time. Oh, I think it's because mine is still playing the intro. Oh, can you, can you click yeah, the yeah, button? Yeah, I skipped it. There you go. Yeah, there we go. I, I kind of skipped. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, shall I take the left and you the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you a way faster? I can already hear it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I ah, don't worry about it. Yeah, we didn't make an <laughs> agreement. Who, who does the, the middle one? Uh, usually me. <laughs> oh, you were typing the left one. Uh, I was confused it because it was going. on the right and then it moved. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, man. Almost beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Nice. Come zombies. <laughs> we will type you down. Oh. Hey, I'll let you I'll let you have this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's in the middle. What do we do? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I was a bit confused which one I was typing I because know. it was behind the other one. Hunt them I mean, down. Oh, wow. I'm Come on, you can do it, Peter. Completely. Because <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say as well. I mean, this is really useful if you want to uh, learn to type, uh, you know. If you want to learn to type more quickly. Yeah, and, and also correctly, yeah. you know, without mistakes. Uh, this yeah. is a game that really challenges you to do that. So if you want to learn to type without watching, you know, because a lot of people will be uh, used to, um, you know, looking at their keyboard and then pressing one key after another. Oh, that one. Oh! Nice. Oh. Ah! Come on, get him. Nice. <laughs> ah, I'll let you have There this we one. go. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking of Dennis, those sentences. I, I, I wasn't. 
Man. That was quite quick. Yeah. Uh, John's asking if it's available on Steam. Yes, yes. it is. Actually, we, we got it from Steam. Damn. <laughs> that was quick, huh? <laughs> it was, yeah. Oh, we're doing quite well. Hatch out. Uh-oh. Oh. It said keyboard addict, so I typed that. <laughs> I know, yeah. Well, you've got pretty much twice the score I have already. <laughs> <laughs> I got cold fingers as well. Good excuses. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a head rolling down. That's not nice. Chemi is saying educational also, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got different um, different languages uh, that you can add, different vocabularies, actually. How hard can it be to type ham? What the <laughs> Shouldn't be that hard. Oh, dan I got Dancing Queen. Kebab time. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Careless Whisper. <laughs> it's a good song. Woo. George Michael. Yep. I like the saxophone part. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Keyboard Warrior. I like that word. Binge, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> <laughs> because it said binge drinker? <laughs> yeah, you know it. We're on an express elevator All right. In the elevator, that's always a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. Peter is saying, wait till you get to the boss stage. <laughs> Getting serious. Uh, Justin's asking, what's this game called? Is it the ID to type in the words before the zombies get too close? Yes, it's called Typing of the Dead. Yeah. Um, what's a specific version called again? Uh, overkill. Uh, overkill. Yeah, and indeed, you, uh, you kill zombies by typing as quickly as possible. So yes. preferably before they hit you. Yeah. It kind of puts the pressure on you though. Yeah. So it's also, how are you with typing while handling pressure? You know, <laughs> that's the question. So it's not a very new game, it's from 2013. <laughs> Who are so you? Oh, <laughs> there we go. Ah. I started typing the other word, but uh, I, I didn't quite, it didn't start typing it. Go on, quickie. <laughs> 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 Butterball. <laughs> Seriously. What the hell are these guys doing? Caesar is saying, I learned how to type faster in multiplayer games. Oh, yeah. By writing toxic messages or typing <laughs> games? <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> I, just, I just gave up. You can carry me. That's fine. <laughs> Carry is real. Yep. Yep. Hold your fire. Over there. There we go. Think we should tell him the elevator's out. <laughs> Evil gaming goes to saying, man, look at their faces. Total concentration. Oh yeah, I mean it's serious, man. 
I, I already know I can't beat uh, Mike at this. Nor at, <laughs> nor at shooter games, by the way, because we tried that and it's... Well, was not a success? M Mike has too much time on his hands. <laughs> I do? <laughs> wait, wait until he has kids. Uh, cats is enough for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, we, we, we got Papa Caesar here. Ooh, is this the boss? I think so, yeah. Let's get him. He looks quite evil. Yeah, let's let's type him to hell. <laughs> Was that is that Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Ooh. Guns PhD. PhD. <laughs> mm. All right. Oh! Oh that no! Oh, you don't! You don't slap the disabled person. And, and now he's got his glasses. His glasses on again. How does that work? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is cool, man. <laughs> and he like what? The, he's stabbing himself with it. What the? And his head was stuck in a. What? The, oh, that sounds right. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Uh, I think I, I have a feeling that this this disabled guy is now going to turn into one big ass monster that we have to. That defeat. might be the boss then. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that big brain. Bring it on, Jasper. Oh no. I'm ready for you. Oh no, he can fly. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give me a chance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> tell Candy I never had a chance. <laughs> I don't know who Candy is, but tell her. I'll just do. What, wait, I'll just let you type. I'll do. I'll do the the letter, the single letters that come in <laughs> okay. now and again. How about that? Yeah, sure. Uh oh, I upgraded. Psycho <laughs> uh, man is poor me. I, I don't get any letters. What the hell? Come on. <laughs> Give me a chance here. I'll hunt him down. I, I, yeah, I don't know what... The... Okay. <laughs> this does not end well, Peter says. Oh, I was not paying attention. I was reading chat. Well, luckily, uh -oh. that was. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, we're running. Oh, he's got full health again. He's cheating. No. How? I don't know. Jam. Ham. Tap. <laughs> Jasper V2. <laughs> I'd be rolling. <laughs> I'll do the running commentary. I'm <laughs> oh, he's dead. What? Easy kill. What the? Okay. Catch cool, son. Well, that was a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like an epic boss fight, but it was, yeah, too spooky for me. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. Well, maybe I'll, I'll put Peter on my headset so I can actually hear what they're saying. Peter is saying the glowing objects you can get to. Uh-oh. Like grab them or something, the objects? How do we do that? I don't know. <laughs> but I don't remember which key. Yeah, that was useful, Peter. <laughs> oh my god. Shall we skip the middle part? Yeah, let's let's do that. So this is, I mean, the story, it's just <laughs> so bad. you got a, a guy doing the, the movie uh movie trailer voice as well it's really funny um anyway uh let's see what we did so i'm player one you're player two just to be clear uh your <laughs> score is way clear higher <laughs> based on your the accuracy scores. is higher your letters typed is higher because i gave up on some some of them your kills is higher of course perfect words of course higher uh, more than double actually than what i had best combo eh, quite a bit higher gorgasm i guess that's like i actually don't know what that is I'm not sure. Maybe it's like the, the, the amount of time you are uh, actually doing kills or something. I don't know. Player deaths, well, we both died zero times, so that's nice. Okay. Oh, apparently it's tab. Yeah, I know, but doesn't it objects. show up? Doesn't it show up, tab? Um, as in that you have to do... I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, anyway. Papa Spells of Pain. Naked Terror. Ballistic Trauma. 
pop. Maybe we can show the um, the mouse function in this game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but I don't know if it will let us do the um, multiplayer. I'm not sure. Because uh, it's. I don't have sufficient space for my mouse anyway. <laughs> no, I know, I know. But I first have to switch, I think. Um, so I might have to exit out of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then select uh, House of the Dead instead of Typing of the Dead. Uh, and then it's fingers crossed that it will let me. Oh, it will. This is nice. interesting. This didn't work before. All right. Let's do this. Uh, yeah. Wait, let's see. Um, um, I um, have um, very um. limited space for my mouse. So well, let's I'm not sure how I will do it in this. Story but... mode. Um, I, I'm just making some space as well and uh, getting the keyboard out of the way. Uh, so we'll do normal mode. I have no idea about gun shop or whatever what that is. Um, so I'll just because I, yeah, I sure. want to just make sure it works. Shall we? Do you have a preference of which one we will we'll do? No. Anything Shall we do fine. overkill? Sure. Okay, just click that one. I probably, I think you have to click it as well. I think I just have to click continue. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Can we choose can, a gun. Can... Oh, you can actually. Uh, what are you? What are you clicking to uh, change it? Just the, the. The arrows. Yeah, the arrows. I'm trying to do that as well. It it, it won't let me. So anyway, I'll it's just go. It's not a bug. It's a feature. I'll just go with the magnum. Um, <laughs> headshots all the way. Okay, I'm going for. Wow. All right. Ooh, that one shot. Well, this is strange. I'm going for that assault rifle. Oh, good. maybe I. Uh, I think uh, you're using uh, somebody else's profile, right? So that might be why. Ah. So that person might have played. Um, exactly. So you can unlock stuff in the game. I'm seeing. So all right. That's probably why you can choose uh, different weapons, and I can. <laughs> that Mine person is, like is a in fresh the chat. Install. Good job, Peter. You unlocked a lot of weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine is like a fresh install, so we, we just got it and installed it today. You uh, just got the on, rookie on weapons. Account. Mike is actually borrowing somebody else's account. Um, anyway, uh, let's switch. Uh, can you uh, can we skip the cutscene? Yep. I'm just yeah. It's probably quite interesting and amusing, but still. So this guy's is not typing of the dead. This is house of the dead, and uh, the difference is uh, mouse movement versus typing. So now. It's just uh, mouse movement. We're going to watch your hand for a second. Yeah. <laughs> and now so you guys can see what we're seeing. Zombies. So you've got an automatic weapon, Whoa. right? Uh, no, it's not automatic. Oh, actually. it's got a lot of bullets though, for a non-automatic yeah. weapon. It's still oh, I just figured out how I can actually reload. It's semi-automatic. Uh, it's the uh, it's the middle mouse button. Oh, ah, nice. Okay, got it. Oh, oh, they were already dead. Shall we? Shall I do the left ones again, and you the ones um, on the right? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Big brain tactics. Oh, that was a knife to the face. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. That okay, hurt. I'm wondering if you can actually like shoot the knives out of the... Oh, wait. There's a, there's a guy with a shield there. Oh, I'm gonna get him. Oh. There he goes. Shoot the glowing objects, is what Peter says. Uh, what glowing objects? The hammer? <laughs> what the hell? I'm not sure. I don't see any other... Oh, I need to reload. Oh, <laughs> it's moving so much. I know, yeah. They, they should make oh, a VR... Oh, there was a glowing object in the... Oh. They should make a VR game out of this. Oh, I just... <laughs> Jack can play it. I saw a glowing object in the cabin. Yeah, sometimes you'll see them. Oh. It's 
So carefully look shells and stuff like that, and maybe desks also. Oh, there's one. Got it. Yeah, health. Ah, oh. nice. Oh, oh grenades. grenades. Oh, I missed it. Oh, that knife hurt. Maybe we go there again? Uh, I don't know. Not sure though. Harmid is uh, asking us to announce the next winner. Just a moment. We will announce the next winner in a little bit. Uh, Anders asking House of oh. Dead Remastered. No, it's uh, Typing of the Dead. And then this is like the, yeah. What was it called again? Like the mouse. Uh, this is called thing. House of the Dead. Oh, House of the Dead. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was what he said. House of the Dead Remastered. Yeah. Oh, there were grenades, but yeah, it's too late again. Oh, wait. I'm reloading. Whoa. Okay. What happened there? Was that uh, a grenade? I'm not sure. Oh. Oh, you're still alive. Yeah. Oh, you're dead. I'm dead. What? Oh, I've got 7,000 points. <laughs> Cost to join, 3,500. Okay, I will join. Hmm. Apparently, I didn't get enough of those heal things in the oh. shelves. All right. Fair enough. What did you do is saying I miss these arcade style games. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, games these are really cool. are arcade style. Uh, is, is there something we're missing? Like, uh, I get the feel. Oh, oh yeah, oh. yeah. Well, here we go. Oh wait. Oh man, what the hell? I lost. I a think lot I, of points because I had to revive. I think I shot the knife uh, out of the sky. You can actually shoot it. I think. Oh, I didn't know that. Once they uh, throw it. Save the civilian. Um, are you are you targeting the civilian? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just target target whatever moves. Yeah. Oh oh oh. Oh what the, what the hell? That's a strong guy. Oh, we need to. I think so. Aim there, I think. Boom. Are you targeting his head? Yep. I can see it. <laughs> I'm just clicking his head like crazy. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. Yep. Looks like your computer just crashed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So how's the mouse treating you? Uh, quite nice, actually. <laughs> it's so cheesy. <laughs> I know it is. I love it's it. It's so cheesy that it's fun. I love it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. The elevator has some issues. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to read the chat. Easy kills. Yep. Oh, yeah. Headshots all the way, baby. Nice. Oh, knife. Yep. I was trying to shoot something in the back there. Heels or uh, grenades? Well, that's, I think it was money. But I'm not sure. Hmm. Oh. Was she trying to run away? <laughs> I think so. I'm not sure. Uh oh, oh nice. knife. Go away. <laughs> Leave me alone. Leave me alone. So, if you want to have this game, make sure to participate in the giveaway. Go to anatidacom yes. slash 2 slash insider. And 20 US dollar. Steam code. Enough or near enough for this game? Um, uh, depends on your region. It should I think. be, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it depends, but uh, it should be close to enough or enough by itself. And also depends on the version you uh, you oh, want. Oh, I want a box. Yeah. Eh. Some head shoots. Nice. So yeah, m mouse is more my thing compared to uh, keyboard. FXG. Oh, uh, FGX Raven is saying that was evil thoughts, Mike. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. This game gets the worst out of people. 
Oops, oh, there was a civilian. Oh, wrong move. <laughs> I didn't know it was a civilian. Oh. I saw something moving <laughs> and I shot it. What the hell civilian. did you do? <laughs> what the hell, Mike? <laughs> Sorry about that, civilian. Uh oh. Go away. Oh, money. Grenade. So, how do I throw the grenade? Down? I don't know. Did, oh, did you get it? I think so. Not sure. I don't know how, how I can see it. Um, on the bottom left, we have some yeah? grenade signs. Wait. Oh, that must be I got... Oh, knife. Ouch. I think I, I, think I did it. It's a right mouse button. Ah, okay. Yep. What the hell? <laughs> that was a grenade. Uh oh. 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 This requires concentration. <laughs> uh, does it? Focus, you must. <laughs> Come on. Let's find the trip. Bring it on, zombies. Booyah. What the hell? These movements? Yeah, it's it's Whoa. a bit hard. To... It's really throwing you off. And also, the fact that I've got two cursors on my screen somehow is also throwing me off quite a bit. <laughs> I'm like, wait, which one was mine? Yeah, it can be really confusing. <laughs> which one was me? Yay. Oops, I almost shot the civilian <laughs> again. <laughs> almost? Really? <laughs> hmm. I didn't what do the? It on purpose. Stop moving! Stop moving the damn screen! <laughs> Is this guy nope. dead? Looks like it. Uh, looks He's like not it moving could be. at least. Oh, I've got a magazine. Comic page unlocked. Nice. <laughs> so Hello, I guess Sam. these are Welcome like the extras screen. you can unlock. Oh, here's the the guy with the helmet Chilling. again. Woo! <laughs> FGX Raven is saying that proves twice, Mike. And Peter now too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor civilian. <laughs> you okay? Better than oh okay. god. I've never felt so turned on in my life. She sounds like she's using something. Don't worry. <laughs> Maybe she is. Oh, we can skip this, right? Alright. We apologize for the inconvenience. Missing real, I, I, I guess. How we survived that Oh wait, what was that? What are they holding? Some big weapon. Miniguns. What? Alright, interesting. <laughs> this is the new Horizon Zero Dawn game. Whoa! What the hell? Damn. Yep. What, what did we start a play? Um, Can I already kill this? Oh. I don't know who the animation did on this game, but... Interesting to say the least. Oh, we need to sh shoot the barrels. Shoot. The I tried to. And are we shooting? Uh, I, I was. And I'm not sure what, what you're doing. Oh, I need to keep. Ah. Oh. I was clicking, but I just need to press it down. Yeah, it's a minigun, dude. Oh. Oh, minigun I'm dead again. Brrr. I'm dead again. Cost to dead join half no. my points again. Okay, now I know it's a minigun. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know really how to kill her. Or how to... Wait, maybe you shoot her in the... Tatas. <laughs> or in the chest, at least. Let's just put it that way. I just aim for the head, mostly. I, oh, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I don't know if it helps to aim at the head, actually. I'm not I'm no sure. Idea. Ouch. Did that hurt, really? Yeah. Oh? Well, the thing is, I'm wondering if we should be shooting, like... Uh, Ow. I'm not sure what, what the best way is. I, I, I don't know. Really. Oh, she's gonna... 
She's gonna shoot guys out of her. She's giving birth. Yes. <laughs> She's being a mother. <laughs> I'm almost dead. I'm pretty sure this is gonna. Oh, I was gonna say this is gonna end me. Actually, I think we do have to keep shooting her because the her health bar is going down slightly uh, uh, whenever you, you I shoot her. So it does do something. Yeah, and I think you have to just dose your um, your shots. Yeah, otherwise you overheat her. your minigun. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> FGX Raven is saying. This game okay, really gonna give me nightmares. nightmares. Yeah, I know. Can't imagine. <laughs> Sam Nico is also going like, aim for her. Um, um, well, <laughs> anything. <laughs> yeah. All right, but I think we we pretty much proved the point, right? Because I, uh, I mean, you're using a GM50 as well. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm using a GM50. Developed by these guys. Oh, nice. Uh, it's it's a hilarious game. Oh, here we go. All right. So as you can see, I mean, I'm player one. Uh, Mike is play was player two. Um, I scored a lot higher than he did. Uh, my accuracy was a bit better. I I revived two times, and it takes half of your points. <laughs> actually, uh, actually, I fired way less shots than you did uh, and, and you have more kills uh, you have more headshots though uh, best combos a bit higher yeah it's uh, it's uh, my, my, though my accuracy was a little bit higher yeah. and um, yeah. I, I need a little bit lower sensitivity to get better accuracy yeah There's no space for that here I mean I, I could also and there's uh, I, I did think I noticed a bit of delay in um, in the movement um, I'm not sure if that's down to being multiplayer as well, you know, it's, it might Plus be... Six is asking what's the name of the game? Because uh, it says you guys are playing Horizon oh. Zero Dawn. It, mm. it does? We're not, we're playing... No. Uh, Typing, Typing of, the, of dead. the Dead, it's called, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but I think this, uh, yeah, this pretty much says it all. Um, yeah, but the, the, the accuracy also of this mouse is quite good. Um, and I would be more than happy to uh, to play with this as well. So it's a pretty good mouse. And like I said, I, I played around with it a little bit already. Uh, I, I do believe, did I take the weights out of this one or did I leave it in? See, I, I don't even notice. No, the weights are actually still in there. Um, so I could even make it a bit lighter if I wanted to throw throw it around a bit more or easier, you know? But it, it's, not, it's not very heavy, um, for me at least. And... Um, the size is uh, maybe a little bit on the short size for my hands, personally, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice mouse, yeah, I like it. So I can definitely uh, approve it and, uh, yeah, tell you guys to, to buy it if you like it and if it's in your uh, price range that you're looking for. I think it is uh, time to close it up for today. Yeah, actually, I do think that as well. So, so guys, I hope, uh, actually, yeah, we've got one more winner. Yeah, under our final so winner for let's today. let's make one more person happy and give them a $20 Steam code. So this is our last code for today, but next week we'll be back again with yeah. a new giveaway. So make sure to be here again, We're same back place, same every time. every week. Yeah. New chances to win prizes to register. Yes. All right. Abe. Abe, congratulations, you also won a 20 US dollar Steam wallet code. We will email it to you in the coming days, so keep an eye on your mailbox. Yep, and uh, well, thank you guys for joining today. Uh, I hope, yeah, we, uh, we explained a lot about the products. I hope we answered most of your questions. Uh, I, I hope, hope you, you enjoyed uh, it. Yeah, if you like some of the products, go try them out, uh, and, or just buy them and, and have fun with them. Uh, heard a lot of people already had some of our products, uh, like a GK50 uh, low profile, and really loved them, so... Happy to hear that, always. And yeah, next week, what do we have next week? Next week we have an the overview latest. of the latest creator series monitor. So something completely different. Um, monitors and monitor desktops. And desktops indeed. So systems and of course monitors, which are both very important for uh, creators. Um, and I do believe that Ja will be presenting that. Yeah. So make sure to check it out next exactly. week. Same place, same time, new giveaway. Yep, and uh, see you guys next week. See ya. Thank you. Bye.